Alexa, stop. 6.30 p.m. alarm, stop and break <laughs> All right. Let's fade the music. You always know it's a professional gig when you can fade. Just fade the music. Oh, yeah. That's right. The music is faded. Stop now. My cat's going to join me. She's going to be the co-host of this uh, episode of the Brandon Bishop Podcast. Hi! I am uh, that guy, and this is that thing. Um, this has been one of those, uh, I'm try- like I said, trying to get back on um, schedule, doing these on Tuesdays. We release a new episode of the Asai TV Life every single uh, Monday and Friday. We do a podcast every Wednesday, the Brandon Bishop Podcast. We're supposed to be doing the uh, It's Complicated podcast with myself and Chantel every Thursday. And then Wednesday, I just take advantage of myself all damn day. Uh, it's 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 not pretty, but I need that once a week. Keeps everything healthy. How's everybody doing? Feel free to leave comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel real fast. Uh, it is a monetized channel, so it does help us just with your your eyes. And your hands, when you pick up this thing and you go, click. Did I just stop everything? Oh, okay. Accidentally actually clicked it. Sorry. So, yeah, go subscribe to the channel. And uh, I feel like a 16-year-old, like, will you like and subscribe to my videos? That was something I made fun of before I started getting paid to do these things, which is weird it's not a lot uh last year i i'll be honest with you last year uh, it built up for like three or four months and i was like oh wait i didn't even know i was getting like i knew i was monetized but i didn't know it was like building up and you had to set up the the payment and everything and it's i didn't know how to do it at first you had to set up the the adsense or the google ads or whatever whatever the hell it is and i had all this money it was just sitting there and then I figured it out. Then all of a sudden I look at my uh, account and it's uh, $2,500 more. And I was like, where the hell did that come from? And that's what it was. It was uh, kind of a weird thing, kind of a cool thing. And every month you get a little uh, <clears throat> something, something from YouTube. But we get nothing, nothing unless uh, your eyes are on this prize. And we appreciate you for that. We really do. Now, I know we don't get a lot of people live. I don't advertise these things. The Asai TV live show that comes out every Monday and Friday is not. It's not something I really advertise. I'll put it out there once in a while if there's something cool on there. It's more of a scrapbook. And I talk about this all the time. I say the exact, I repeat myself constantly. It's more of a scrapbook to document this special, special time in this guy's life and in the life of Asai TV. So it's there. There's like 65 episodes. I think we're like. Um, they're scheduled out for like the next month and a half. And then we keep adding new ones and it's mostly van life stuff. It's mostly um, touring and on the road and all the adventures and all the cool people that we get to film with and all the uh, stuff that goes behind the scenes of a side TV and my life. Personally, my kids on there, my cats on there, my mom's on there. My daughter's on there. All my friends are on there. And, uh, there's household names on there. There's people you have never heard of, but you should know on there. Uh, there's a lot of this. I just did a van tour, which will be out in about a month, I think. Uh, the beginning of July. I've already... Are we already scheduled out to July? Sorry, I have this right next to me. I'll look. I'll just look. You, just, you can just sit there and wait. While you're waiting, go subscribe to the channel. You'll see all of it for yourself. The Asai TV Life. Yeah, we got a... Wow, I look good in that thumbnail. I wish I could show you, but um, I'm trying to embrace the gray, but I don't know. I have a box with a really pretty girl on it in there that'll stain everything, but I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to, I'm not getting younger. You know, you can't just keep faking it because you don't always making it. No idea what the hell I'm talking about. Anyways, I'm scheduled way out. But YouTube, man, I YouTube was a place I just put stuff that I wanted to keep. 
back in the day, I'm talking 11 years, 12 years ago when I first got on YouTube, never imagined that I would make a dollar from YouTube. I didn't even know you could at that point make a dollar from YouTube. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been interesting for the last, I'll say the last year because we started putting up a lot of clips like the stuff from the Stephen Piercy documentaries and uh, a lot of stuff from the different shows. And uh, one thing that's really taken off is uh, my show, go there, eat that. I, I clipped out all of the restaurants individually, all the cool ones and uh, put all of those on there. So you'll see just those restaurants instead of having to sit through a show of like 10 to 12 restaurants an episode. What's up there too muchy. I'm always saying that wrong. Yeah. Let's go. Brandon. Very funny. Um, <laughs> there's a thing that I do whenever I see those stickers because you see like the let's go Brandon stickers that the stupid people buy um, I grab them and I put them in the trash just at the store I <laughs> I just it's so dumb that it's it's just my little way of just going okay just it just balances it out for me just a little bit I feel better I feel good when I do it I feel all right I'm feeling good and I, I usually just, most stores, I, I, I literally did it today. I'm not going to lie to you. There's a thrift shop, in not a thrift shop, it's an antique store. And it, they got this one little really, and I don't want to get political stuff because it's so mind-numbingly stupid. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Biden guy. I'm certainly not a Trump tard. I'm just independent, wide-eyed, going, I do this a lot, just. Ah, uh, uh. anyways, like th there was a bunch of stickers, the, the let's go branding stickers. And okay, it was funny. It's actually a funny way that came about with the, with the sports guy and the, the chanting and the guy trying to cover it up. That, that, that's funny for like a, a week. It's funny. Now it's just lame. It's just so mind numbingly lame. Like, and you're going to take my name and my son's name and put it in over there with the Karens and the, you know, whatever. Just keep in mind, and I say this a lot, keep in mind, there's a lot of Brandons out there that can beat your ass. <laughs> Just pointing it out. I was at Bucky's and wherever the hell I was at a Bucky's. I'm pretty sure this one was in Florida. And there was, a, a, I was dressed as the beaver. I have the whole outfit. I think I've even worn it on this podcast. I uh, had the beaver head. It's got a tail. It's the Bucky's beaver. It's, it's a whole suit they sell for like 30 bucks. Had to get one because I love me some Bucky's. So I'm, I'm dressed like an idiot. I'm dressed like a beaver. I'm walking around. I, mean, I think I was hanging out with Ryzen at the time and uh, Laura and I think Ryzen's wife, whatever. A bunch of cool people. And I'm just being a dumbass because I enjoy being a dumbass. I like the dumbass attention. And there was a husband and wife, you know, this big guy, barrel chest, got a mullet and a mustache. It's six different colors and food in it. And just, um, and they both had the shirts, you know, the flag with the let's go brand of it. And I just, and they came up to me like, Oh, wow. Wow. You're dressed like a beaver. Oh, that's funny. And I looked down at the shirt and I said, <laughs> I'm not the only one dressed like an idiot today. And they did, they looked horrified. Like they're just, they're playing the victim immediately. Like we talked about this on the last episode a few days ago. Everyone's a victim. Like, okay, you're going to wear something stupid when somebody calls you out on it. You're not the victim. You're just being called out on your stupidity. Just say, oh, yeah, okay. If somebody said you're stupid for dressed like a beaver, I'd totally agree with them. Anyways, I don't want to be a negative today. We're going to talk to a, uh, an old friend I ain't got the chance to have an in-depth conversation with in a long time. Martin Casals, you might know him as Marty the Moth. Um, he's one of the good guys in pro wrestling who's not had his due yet, and it's um, irritating. So we're going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about some old times with ACW. We're going to talk about uh, what he's been doing since, what he's got next. Uh, and I'll say this to him. Martin's just one of those guys that, you root for him, whether you're a friend or he's got a genuine nature to him. And I've met many people that have this. Uh, I don't recall 
we've known each other for a decade now, or more, actually 15 years almost. I don't think we've ever had a crossed word. He was one of the ones that I could rely on. He's a professional. He's a, just an all around good person, man. He's just, it's really weird. I, I, I'm looking back going, okay, I can think of a bunch of people that are great, but I've, you know, it's been a couple of times you've just been like, Ugh. Martin's just not one of those Ugh, people. He's just a genuine guy. And it's, uh, he deserves uh, the the world, not just in wrestling, but uh, in life in general. And uh, we're going to talk to him in a little bit. Whenever he uh, clicks on and I see his little face at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to click on that face and you'll get to see his face as well. So Martin Casals coming up soon. Speaking of YouTube, though, I did want to talk about I am. I used to uh, I, I never yell at my kid. It takes a lot for me to I, I could maybe think of eight times in his 15 years that I've been like oh yell at him like get your shit together kid um but i used to kind of talk down to him a little bit because he was always glued whether it's on a phone or a tv or a computer screen he's glued to different youtube shows whether he's watching funny stuff or just uh things that he's interested in or video game people doing video game stuff. And we'll talk about that with Martin too, because I think he's into that whole thing. Uh, he's found his footprint in that, in that field. Um, but I always, I, it would, it would be hours, just hours. Uh, and me, I'm a business guy. I'm, I'm always thinking of things to utilize what little time I have left on this planet to just better myself and leave a good, uh, leave a good legacy behind, you know, take care of other people around me. And I'm always thinking, thinking, thinking like, what can I do now, 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 whether it's a podcast, I got two books coming out, whether it's, you know, the Asai TV life, YouTube show, Asai TV in itself. I, I'm, I'm just always there focused on just something to just better myself and do. And he would be staring at his just YouTube. And I always made, I didn't make fun of him. I, I would never make fun of him about that, but. It used to irk me. It used to irk the crap out of me. Like, what do you just do something with just think? Like, can we do anything besides stare at YouTube? And now <laughs> I feel bad because I am watching an F metric ton of YouTube. It has really replaced network television for me. I still have my network shows that I watch. I watch the John Olivers and the Bill Mars and the uh Family Guy, American Dad, South Park, Rick and Morty, all, all of the stuff, okay? I mean, curb your enthusiasm. And these are all my favorite things to watch. I still watch them. All the new stuff that just came out, the Stranger Things, the Obi, Obi-Wan Kenobi series, of course, all the Star Wars stuff, The uh, how many things just came out. It's crazy. The Orville's back. I watched that. It's, it's a ton of freaking stuff. Leave a comment to whatever you're excited about watching right now. Maybe you'll introduce me to something. But YouTube... This is why I do a YouTube show now, the Asai TV Life, which is on YouTube right now. There's 65 episodes that are uploaded, and I think like 58 of them are available to watch right now. Um, I got influenced to do that because, and I've always had stuff on YouTube for decade, over a decade now. <sighs> and it's uh, it's always just been a place to put, you know, my old concert films, old wrestling stuff, uh, stuff with my kid. There's a whole bunch of family stuff on there. Most of that's hidden now because I've taken my personal one because it has like 4,000 people on it and made it a the Asai TV one. It's not me anymore. It's the Asai TV YouTube page. And I just, I just wanted to go through and introduce you people to uh, some of the shows that I watch here and... If you would have told me 10 years ago that I'd be watching these shows, which my TV's right here, in case you're wondering, I would be like, what are you talking about? That makes no damn sense. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give you a, just go through my subscription list here real quick. And I really want you to write these down and discover this stuff. If you're watching my dumb face, if you're watching the Aside TV live show, then you'll uh, like these other shows because my show is kind of fashioned after some of them. And it's just, uh, I, I see things that I want to do and I do them in my own way. And then I try to make things unique as possible. So uh, first one I'm going to talk about, we actually interviewed this guy on the show about a month or two ago, Jacob, the carpetbagger. It's just, uh, 
<laughs> it's just, just look up the carpet bagger. There's a picture of him and his little hat and his glasses. He's just this guy in every single freaking day, every single freaking day, just about he uploads a video of him in a different spot somewhere in this country in the lower 48 states. I think he's been to every state and it's all just the coolest stuff. Now me as a uh, television producer, I watch his show and I've been inspired to visit so many places. And these are all just like fun places, roadside attractions, museums, things like that. Just, um, I watch his stuff all the time. Every single day I watch his stuff and I don't want to float his head too damn big. He's got a big head to begin with, but it's a, uh, I mean, big head is in large cranium. Uh, I'm joking on you, Jacob. Uh, I just really enjoy his stuff. Now, is he uh, a trained television host? No, not at all. Uh, but he's got his stick down. You know, he's got his gimmick down and that's really all you need to do. He's been doing it for almost eight freaking years. And every day, just about every day, You'll find a new video from Jacob the Carpetbagger in some of he's doing the Lincoln Highway right now. Uh, have fun with those tolls and gas money, by the way. But I love watching his stuff every day. It's something different and uh, it's just fun to watch. Another one that I watch is um, Van City Van Life. Why are you watching a show about a guy in Canada that lives with his bulldog, cruisy bulldog in his van? don't know i don't know why i didn't know that lifestyle was possible as an actual lifestyle fast forward three years after i started watching this guy this guy's been living in his van and it's a cool van uh, we're going to talk about van life a little bit probably after we talk to martin but the guy lives in his van up in canada he's traveling across the country back and forth a lot of nature stuff a lot of personal stuff a lot of van build stuff uh and I'm addicted to the show. It's called Van City Van Life. V-A-N City Van Life. You know how to spell van. What am I doing? I don't know why, but every he does about five videos a week. And I'm just, I love it. And again, fast forward a few years later, what is your friend Brandon doing? When I when I am on the road, I live in my van now. I was spending almost four thousand a month on flights and rent cars and gas and parking at the airport and hotels and oh my god all that stuff the whole travel packages i'd be buying them and buying them and i'm like god this is crazy now i just i put a most comfortable bed in the world in the back of the van i have a fridge in the van i have running water a stove an oven uh two jackery batteries i have everything all the little gadgets all the fun stuff i have all of that in the van and i'm not gonna lie it is the greatest form of camping. We all like to camp. I hate sleeping in tents. I hate sleeping in, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a whole bunch of text messages, of course, right when I start talking. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it was the worst part of, uh, I love camping, but I hate tents. I hate sleeping on the ground. I hate all that stuff. This is the best part of camping. I can park anywhere. And all of this, is happening all this money that I'm saving and all of this fun that I'm having. And eventually once my son is out of high school, I'm moving into a bigger van. I'm moving into a bigger van. I don't need all of this stuff. The cool thing about uh, living in a van is you, or at least staying in a van two, three weeks at a time, you realize that you don't need anything. You just don't need anything. Okay. I've got everything that I need in that van and it's fun. It's the most fun I ever have when I'm here in the SI TV studio house, I am itching to get back on the road. I just can't wait. I'm just like, okay, when's the next trip? And my next trip isn't for almost a month, maybe a little more than a month. I think the end of this month got canceled with uh, the women's wrestling army in Chicago, whatever. But I, uh, I have it all to for Chrome is the guy's name and his dog Cruzy. I, I owe it to them. I really do. And through them, I found other van shows and I, uh, I, I really do. I I'd love to interview him. I've actually reached out. It may happen. So we'll see. But um, yeah, I, I watch van city van life and I watch it every time he puts a video out. 
a couple other van dwellers, uh, Trent and Alley. If you ever watch Trent and Alley, so many people have, they get like 350,000 views every episode, which is crazy. Cause I get like a hundred, <laughs> but again, I don't advertise it. It's not a, it's, it's a scrapbook for me. If you enjoy it and you like to watch it, thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe I should. I, I don't know really how to though, to be honest with you. So uh, please leave a comment if you are a, a YouTube guru and you know how to get views and subscriptions and all the precious likes and comments and all that stuff. Uh, let me know because I think I do a pretty good job on this show. It's well edited. It's fun. It's simple. Just phone stuff. But it's um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Trent and Allie, they went kind of from a... Uh, sorry, I got an itch right on my butt cheek. That's the weirdest place. Oh, there's a tag on my short. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you clicked play. What do you expect? Anyway, um, Trent and Allie, they, they were like van lifing all over the world. Like they drove all the way down to the South America and back. But when the pandemic hit, they flew back and they left their van down there. They since got it. Then they started building a house. So it became like a, a house building thing. Then they had a baby and now they're building a garage. And I haven't watched it in months, but that's another one of those van life or ones. Kara and Nate, K-A-R-A -A and Nate. Uh, they're just adorable people that used to live in a van, but now they're just traveling all over the world doing their things. Uh, the Daily Woo with Adam the Woo. Everybody watches Adam the Woo for some reason. Uh, it's really a weird reason. I, I, he gets 50,000 views per episode, but it's a weird thing because he doesn't, he goes to like small towns and just looks at things in a different way. Way too much Disney crap on his stuff. Nobody cares about Disney except for him apparently, but, and uh, you know, teenage girls, but um I, he just explains he'll be walking around in a small town and be like, Oh, look at this mural on the side of the road. That's like half decayed and everything. It's this old hundred year old thing or something. He's just filming it and talking about it. And it's interesting the way he, it's like, I wish I could take nothing and just turn it into something like that suit of armor in the back right there. I look at it and I go, wow, that's a, that's a pretty cool suit of armor. I'm glad I bought that. That's neat. He would talk about it for 15 minutes and make it make you want one. Like, okay. <sighs> Anyways, I dig that stuff. Any Adam, the woo's another one. Uh, Grim life collective. Have you heard of these guys? They're starting to grow. They're starting to blow up a little bit. They're getting about 50,000 an episode now too. They're kind of counterculture stuff. Uh, a side TV has a couple shows like that. One called sparkle nation with Leah sparkle. And they have another show called, uh, we have another show called bad people, bad places, bad things with uh, Rob Risen. Uh, and it's all kind of counterculture and like spooky stuff, movie locations from horror movies, murder sites, uh, just, you know, the creepy stuff. And uh, that's basically uh, what Grim Life Collective does. So uh, GRIM, yeah, they're just at the Monster Palooza thing, which I didn't even know about. Now I do. So I get influenced by all this stuff. And the funny thing is, is a lot of these things that happen end up on different shows for a side tv a side tv has over 35 different original shows that i film with my cameras and we put it together on the same computer here and uh oh they got interview with tim curry cool that's awesome anyways uh i, I still watch the old buzzfeed stuff even though watchers like got ryan and shane and all that i i do handle a couple of uh youtube accounts one for audra sarjalis uh sarjal i can never say her name right but uh, I handle her YouTube account. She does a show called Secrets of Sex. Nita Marie, uh, she has her own channel. She's a, like a top 1% OnlyFans model. It's not porn. It's just a commentary type of thing. My boys in Big and Funky, I watch them. Uh, Days with Jordan of the Lion. He, uh, Days, D-A-Z-Y. I can't talk or spell. Martin just joined us. D-A-Z-E with Jordan the Lion. Um that's another travel thing, just going around town and uh, looking at cool stuff. Dr. Hannah Strait, she's straight up freaking hot, and she lives in a van. I have to watch that. Um, <laughs> Ghost Town Living. Are you writing these down? I want you to check these out because I, I know some of these people now. I want to support them. Maybe someday they'll support me. Uh, Ghost Town Living, the guy who bought uh, Sarah Gordo out in California, has a YouTube show. It's fascinating. He's rebuilding it. Uh, Geez, Hollywood Graveyard. The guy just goes around looking at graves of celebrities and stuff. Uh, Trek Trendy and Josh Cahill. They uh, All they do is travel on planes and trains, and they review the planes and trains. And it's freaking 
stupid, addictive. And I'm just like, I can't stop watching this guy sitting on a plane. What am I doing with my life right now? Sometimes it's great background noise, but it's just, ah, I can't stop watching this stuff. Lamont at large, he just literally walks around with his freaking phone going, Hey guys, it's Lamont at large, and I'm here where some guy got murdered, and I watch every freaking second of it. <sighs> Matt's RV reviews. I am addicted to RVs. I'm addicted to van life stuff, and he reviews all the stuff at the dealerships, and he's this fat guy and his wife, and they're just literally the worst editing, the worst production ever. It's it's horrible. But I'm addicted to watching every single damn one. Or has he got a new one? We finally found the Tiffin Guest Class A motorhome for you. Yeah. I'm going to watch that as soon as I'm done talking to you. Mr. Ballin. He just sits there and tells horrible stories about people that have died. Jeez. Uh, I mean, there's another one. P.P. Peter. The guy's over there in Maldonova or Russia or something like that. And he just goes on adventures with his friend. And it's hilarious. You got to watch that. And my future girlfriend, Nikki Delventhal. Uh, N I K K I D E L V E N T H A L Nikki Delventhal. She used to be a NFL cheerleader. I think she was on The Bachelor. Now she lives in a freaking Prius with her dog camper. And I love her. And someday she's going to love me. It's going to happen. She has no idea who I am, but I never really stalked anybody. But I'm a really good talker and I'm really uh, convincing and I'm, I'm a manipulator. And I'm, I'm going to put all of those to work to uh, just build a friendship with Nikki Delvin Thumb. Way out of my league. I'm not expecting anything more than a friendship. I just want to hang out with her and her dog. Anyways, uh, another person who has a YouTube show, and uh, he's waiting on me right now. There's that man right there. How you doing, sir? Oh, hello, you sexy mother trucker. Son of a bitch. You sound good, and you look good. How Where, are you, where are you right now? Are you in your house? Uh, yeah, I'm in my house. I'm in my streaming studio. This Is that like a green screen behind you? I literally, this is the first time I'm seeing it. Since you brought me in, this is the first time I'm seeing this background, I guess. I literally have a green screen back here. I don't know why it I was turned about into a to fireplace and a couch. I was about to ask you, what, what, you have a grand piano and a like a multifaceted fireplace and all this stuff? Damn, dude. I wish this was my house. I won't even lie. I, I, this house is would be way cool. Can you lie and just say it is? This is absolutely my house. It looks and, good. And thank you. I keep it really clean. I have four dogs. And you can't even tell. Because the, all the pillows are in the right spots. Uh, I'm a master pianist, as you can see. You do and, have a uh, master. Uh, wait, what'd you say? Mass pianist. Oh, a pianist. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm not a mat. No, I, I don't know what I could say on this show. What can, you can say what whatever my you language like to say, dude. No, there's no, there's none of that. Come on, you know this. <laughs> so I've been uh, telling my community, actually, because I surprised them and said, hey, I want to do this live i see my buddy do his interviews live all the time my my communities want to know where can they see this interview besides just my channel where can they find your channel your asy network i have no idea because nobody freaking watches this shit um no it's uh you go to asai tv the uh youtube page and that's where all this stuff is this youtube page for asai tv is like the doormat for the actual asai tv network so we do all the fun little SI TV life behind the scenes stuff. We do all the, the, this stuff. And then if you, you can listen to the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple music, Spotify, tune in, Stitcher, iTunes, blah, whatever. It's everywhere. All the stuff, all this stuff. Yeah. We're available in like every home in the entire universe. Are you TikToking it? I don't know what the, I, you know, I was just talking to Vinny Vineyard uh, a couple days ago and we're both old school. You know, we're just, when I see TikTok, it's like I look at TikTok and, you know, the shit just comes up on your phone. You don't look for it. TikTok finds TikTok. TikTok finds <laughs> you. TikTok finds you. It's like, hey, watch this little girl shaking her ass for 15 seconds. And I'm like, of course, I'm going to watch it. I'm a human. You know, like, multiple okay. times. Yeah. It's a yeah. very nice ass. OK. And then it goes to the next one. And then it goes to the next one, and next one, next one, next one, next one. Then you're rubbing one out, and you don't even know how it started. It's like, okay, this is <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how. And everyone tells me, everyone tells me, Brandon, get on Twitch, get on TikTok, get on Snapchat. I'm like, I don't like how. What else am I? I have, I do shit all you have day. To get on all of them. You have to get on all of them, man. It's ridiculous. Uh, TikTok. Oh, no, you got me saying TikTok. You son of a bitch. 
TikTok is very good and smart because when I hit the back button, it just takes me to another TikTok. And then I hit the back button. I'm like, I want to go check my email or something. I hit the b- back and it takes me to another TikTok. I hit back, takes me to another TikTok. I'm like, you guys are good. So you have to hit back like three times really quick in order to get out of the program. And that's how it gets you. I don't want to be it's- gotten. That's the thing. I don't. I want to, if I can monetize it and I can have another, because I was looking, so I was talking to a friend earlier today. If Social media is like a tree. And then you got all these branches. You got your Facebook, you got your Instagram, you got your Twitter, you got your, but you got to feed the main tree. You know what I'm saying? If I can figure out how to get monetized for all these things and make it worth my time, I don't look at my phone all day. I'm forced Mm. to sometimes when people are texting me and calling and stuff. But I think that a lot of that comes with being, you know, 47 years old. And I don't, I'm not at school, like with my friends going, Hey, did you see this dog? It's surfing or what? I, I don't, what is on TikTok? Well, when you were, what do you do on growing TikTok? up? When you were growing up, there wasn't things like electricity, so of course you wouldn't be used to phones. Sweet, I was hoping for a spit. I was hoping I, make- you almost got one too. That's why I got this <laughs> guard on here. I've been trying to make you spit for years. Yeah, um, but uh, no, I find myself constantly on the phone now, and my wife hates it. Um, I hate myself for it, <laughs> but but then I'm like, okay, there's stuff in front of me. I got to take care of. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh my gosh, I have to post this YouTube video for this week. I didn't post a, uh, an, an Instagram. I suck because what you're supposed to do is post a different thing on Facebook than you do on Instagram, that you do on Twitter, and something different for every single one. I suck. I'm like, I'm, gonna, I'm you got one piece of content today, and that's going on everything because that's all I could do. I got shit I got to do too. So you're, you're a busy guy, man. That, that, that's what I was saying before you got on was I did not take YouTube seriously at all. It was a place to just, uh, you know, here, here's some, uh, here's my, uh, until it got monetized. And now it's like, I'm looking at it cause it's part of business now. And I'm looking at it like, okay, how many likes did I get? How many views did I get? And, and then I, I, like you said, I fucking hate myself afterwards. I'm just, my <laughs> eyes hurt. My neck hurts. I'm just, oh God. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. You're still on YouTube. Like, oh man. Really? Um, it's not, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a, a, a rib right there. That's serious. Like, like you're at three o'clock in the morning. Like last night, I, I literally three o'clock in the morning looking at my phone going, what am I doing? This is not healthy. This is <laughs> somebody said I, that bl- that blanket's creeping them out. Does it look like a body or something? I don't. It does look like what does I see. Like is there a mannequin or a something in the background? That, that's my suit of armor. I wear that on special occasions. Okay, I see that. But bo- I see that body. Well, a blanket maybe, on the... That could totally be a dead body. Sure. Yeah, okay, it might be. <laughs> it may be exclusive on ASY Network. Dead bodies in the background. Hey, murder mysteries. They're they're rocking right now. Documentaries and everything. Oh yeah, trust me. I know. I wish I could film more of them. Did you just break a bottle over there or something? It's- no, my wife walked past the green screen, and we are babysitting her her brother's dogs. There's two of them, but oh. her brother's dogs had litter, so we ended up getting two of them. But we already had two of them, so now there's six dogs here right now. And I'm trying to make sure nothing gets chewed on or pissed on or or humped on or nobody eats each other. And uh, my wife actually ended up ripping something in her leg. So she's on crutches right now. Again? Uh, yeah, she again. Just hurt, like recently? Uh, she hurt her foot, but it was never on a crutches level. I'm usually the one that like steals the family hospital bill usually. But <laughs> luckily, it, it, I think it's moved on past me after the last three years. How are you? Much better now than I have been in a very long time, actually. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, we go back literally at this point. 2008 is when I met you. Somebody math that for me. What's it's that? really Somebody... weird that that was 15 years ago. Was it 15? That's 15 years. Wow. Now. I was literally talking to my stream like while I was in the waiting room for this. And I'm like, I have known Brennan since. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any of that footage I could put on YouTube? It's all on YouTube. If there's anything I have, Is it's it? all on YouTube because I have no raw footage from anything ACW related. It oh. was all it all went up in a very uh, unfortunate hard drive incident. So yeah, no. 
Yeah, I've lost know, the that's entire not... history. So whatever's on YouTube, it's it's up it's there. there. It's there. I'll have so to. You, I'll have you to were. Uh, I didn't even know your. Na- I didn't know your name was Martin when I met you. It was Tristan Gallo, which <laughs> I, I figured was a work name, but I was too lazy to learn people's real names. It's just too much trouble, you know. What do I call you? Just whatever, Tristan Gallo. Um, what do you remember uh, from that first uh, couple times? Because we had I, when I met you, it was like a treasure for me because. Not only did I get you, but you brought the Utah crew with you, which continued yeah. to grow for about, what, seven, eight years of our working together. And uh, what do you remember, though, that first time at the Phil Long Expo Center with the old big setup that we had? And uh, all the crap? <laughs> for its day, though, come on, that was cool. It was sweet. And honestly, like I was telling my community right before this is like, uh, that was one of my first times leaving my state to get to wrestle. So, uh, and the way it all happened because of Josh Sipple, Caleb crush, whatever he goes by now. Um, he's like, Hey man, uh, I wrestle at this one place over here. You should come over and wrestle, but like, he's kind of a hard ass. So you're going to have to do like a tryout <laughs> match to, he wants to make sure you're good. And so, uh, maybe you guys just work each other. And it was me and a guy named Dallas Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, Neil. yeah, Neil. And, and we'd worked prior and we loved kicking the crap out of each other. And so and you did, we did. We, it you went guys, to count out actually. Oh I, yeah. I, 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 well, I didn't know what to do with it because I didn't know you had ever even seen you. It wasn't easy back then. Like it is now. Did we even have Facebook at that point? I don't think we did. I have mm, 2008, 2008. Yeah. I think it was out. I don't just don't think you and me took it seriously. Like yeah, we maybe should have. Mine is hacked right now, by the way. Oh, fun. Mine's been hacked twice. There was 20,000 people that went and said, hey, I want to find out what Martin Casals is doing. 20,000 people. So that equals brand opportunities, potentially. And then it got hacked. And then it got changed to, I can only see people or only people in Vietnam can see see my profile. And so all of a sudden, by the time I got my profile back, like a week later, uh, it was down to 4,000. And then just yesterday, somebody called me. Oh, 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 it was Mike Rowe. Do you remember Mike Rowe? We drove out in his car. Yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah. He's he here, called right? me. In Colorado Springs? Or he used to be? Or? Arizona no. now. He, oh, okay. he moved to Colorado. Then he moved somewhere else. Then he's now in Arizona, um, and he's going to be getting married. So good for him. He's running um, from something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like we all are. We all are. Um, but he was telling me, like, yeah, man, you deleted all of our messages within the last year. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you should check your Facebook. And this was like Monday, which is what, yesterday? Ugh. Anyways, there's a $500 uh, charge to my to my bank card from Lovely. Facebook. Uh, there, I can't log in to said it's being reviewed because like, apparently somebody broke in, posted an ad because I got an email later saying that an ad was approved in some other language. Uh, changing my password right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get in to change my password. And Facebook slash Meta, whatever the hell you want to call them, doesn't have any sort of customer service or anything to be like, hey, my stuff's broken into. My account, my my bank account's in like attached to it. Apparently, my card's attached to it. But no, could you imagine the people. Could you imagine the people that work there? The <laughs> shit that they would have to deal with on a daily basis. I, I would shut that down to you. Just have a. Oh, I would. Email. I would never, never make a customer service. Yeah. I'd, Hi, Meta Service. How you doing? Uh, customer service. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. Did you, did you try turning it on and off? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what fixes. I've noticed in streaming for some it reason. Does if work. You just shut it on and off. It works every time. Just so about every times. time. Yeah. So, anyways, back rewind 2008. Uh, you and uh, oh, Dallas Murdoch kicked the crap out of each other. Uh, what else do you remember from those days? Because uh, I, I like visit, revisiting. I remember um, not, I said, and I still, I don't know, as a professional wrestler, I don't know as much as I should about the history of wrestling. But uh, Dr. Death uh, Stevens there, and then have, see, having his last match. Um, that's Steve Williams. That's right. Steve yeah. Williams was there. Um, I saw his last match. I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, Franco came back, I believe, recently. I remember him. I was like, oh, that guy's jacked. And at this point, I was 100 and 
80 pounds, maybe soaking wet. You wore uh, it well, though. I mean, you look good. It's a small tights, brother. It's all an illusion. Life is a work. Well, I remember um, the, the thing that struck me was, and I, I, I did uh, mention this a little bit before you got on. It was you and Neil, I think, was the two that came originally, right? Just the two of yeah. you? Just the, you? Just the two of us. Just the two of you. Um, you guys were very genuine people. We're assholes. No, Josh Sipple's an asshole. We know that. Okay. <laughs> I love him, and that's one of his finer qualities. Uh, he's doing some job. I saw him at a uh, freaking expo thing recently, and he's at a booth selling something. Um, but he's an asshole in a lovable way. But you guys were just very, very respectful, very uh, just genuine. That's a, that's the best thing I can say about anybody is that they're genuine. And it was uh, it was so nice because i know we at that point we had a very good product we had a very good following we were doing some good stuff in acw at that point and i was kind of stuck because i was the new guy in town bringing all this shit with me bringing all these guys from oklahoma and texas you know all my mm. guys that trained me and got me going and everybody in colorado kind of looked side-eyed me for a while you know like all right and then uh, you guys kind of came in and you were kind of in the same boat I was. So it was a nice, yeah. it was a breath of fresh air to have just respectful, genuine people on the roster. And I think that you guys, not only your work rate, but your personality in the locker room really just kind of rubbed off on everybody else. And it made us feel like we had a major league. Honestly, look at that roster back in the day. I mean, you could look at it now. I mean, just you know, the risings and just all the, in the, you and the Franco like, and all the people you said, and you know, once in a while we'd bring in Vader or doc or whatever it was, we really had a fun product back then. And it was, uh, I, I remember when uh, you came in and you wanted to tag up with Josh as the team shake it thing, which yeah was good. It was, it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, but I remember looking at you and going, okay, well, that's a guy. We'll see if he sticks around, but that's a guy you can put on a poster. You know, what I mean, that's the guy you can put a belt on him and then stick him on the poster. And eventually we did that. But mm. talk about Team Shake It, man. Talk about them, uh, those ACW days and uh, what you remember and who you enjoyed working with and all that shit. That I was the ACW champion for about 14 years because I just gave it back like last year. The belt back like last year, right? Uh, nine years. You're still champion. I'm still champ right now. So just throw that out there. I'm still the champ. I gave the belt back by sympathy, but I didn't relinquish it. Just saying, everybody. Was that the first time that you worked heel? No, no. I love being an asshole. Oh, yeah. um, was, was that the first time? You did the team shake it thing. That was heelish. But heelish. Was that the first time you got to be a complete dick? Um, I did. Here's the thing. This was my first time going out of the area that I knew because the place that I grew up with, with thank god they were there because i wouldn't be where i am today but they were brought up by people who hadn't gone and done stuff themselves so there wasn't a clear path of do this do this do this so for the first five years of my career i was literally wrestling once a month every month uh and then just practicing for six days a week and just for that one time I could be a local superhero. Um, and I had no clue that there was wrestling in California, Colorado, all these other States where people are doing the same thing. And you go out and you make a name for yourself uh, by going to all these other places and becoming nationally known. I had no clue for the first five years of my career uh, that that was even a thing. So I almost feel like I lost out on all those five years of, of my twenties when I was young. Um, I, I lost out on that time. So like when I went to ACW, there was that nervousness of, oh man, I got to do good. Cause this is my tryout match. Um, and then, uh, I, I'd been working for five years, but again, in front of a crowd only by that time was 12 times, 60 times, 60 times on, uh, in front of a crowd, um, at least, but that's not like, like rock and Mountain pro right now is running. They have 94 shows this year. I wish that was a thing that was going on when, when I was started. Um, I remember going to ACW and the place was freaking huge. It was in a giant, was that was that a convention hall or what was that? Phil Long Expo Center. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, what it was, was it? Enormous. It, it was, was enormous. Just, yes. It was just a big event center is all it was. And now it's a church, a mega church. 
No kidding. No kidding. That's I remember ironic. going in there. Um, I was like, oh, wow, other wrestlers, other people who know how to do this. And I was just excited to be there. And it's a sad thing, but it's an unfortunate thing I hear a lot um, is what you said is that you were genuine in your attitude towards being there was, I guess, not an asshole-ish. I guess you didn't say it that way. But it's sad that a a good attitude and, and being excited about being there sticks out. Um well, we had because a good we had a good roster. We had a good roster of good people. That good are, roster. Most of them are still my friends today. Um, some of them are just not. I, you know, it's kind of it's <laughs> kind of fun when you get older. It's because back in the day, you're just and, and I'm sure you you can relate to this in in your travels. But back in the day, you needed people, and you yeah. did, and you wanted to make people happy, and you wanted to make it work. And then you get older. And you're like, fuck these people. I don't give a shit about you. If you don't want to be here, go, please. It's less work for me. Just get out of my face. I'm, so, I'm happy to see you go. I want the people that want to be here. That's what you know. SITV is. I've got megastars, I've told that. People that are at the, you know, I'll, I'll say big time wrestling people. And then, you know, get on the phone. Hey, I'm, I'm like, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. I don't care. Go. You're nobody. We can get somebody else. And I think a lot of people need to hear that. Yeah, because it sticks out. Like in some of the most, I've been blessed enough in my career that I worked really hard, and I uh, have to pinch myself sometimes when I look through my phone, and it's got numbers of people that I've watched on TV, and those that I've met that are in my phone are some of the nicest guys ever. Like WWE Hall of Famers, I'm just being humble and kind of shit. I'm like, that's cool, and I hope that's what everybody emulates unfortunately it doesn't always happen in the entertainment industry whether it be wrestling music whatever there's assholes out there did you uh, have you have you tried to get out of wrestling recently uh not tried to get out i've just been doing other things um i know i can't wrestle forever so i've been working hard on my twitch channel i got i'm streaming right now on my twitch channel twitch.tv slash mark cells hi twitch <laughs> Everybody say hi, Brandon. On this is my, my, this is my first time on Twitch. I'm, I'm excited about this. See, so, thought, so you already know. You, I always thought Twitch like was a like a, a thing. Like, just, like, okay. A, like a took a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Just a, oh, shit. got any more of that Twitch? <sighs> uh, but no, I, I I I got married, and uh, I've been doing a lot of construction. I'm trying to buy my third house now, and if I could try to get as many rental properties underneath me as possible, then then I, no matter how many bumps I take in life, my family and I, me will always be set. If I get enough rental passive income coming, so so you married the panties girl. The panties. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, I married the panties girl. I love that's how you know her. Uh, that's the only time I've ever met her. Let me let me go back to uh, a place I did not want to run a show. Um, after the Philong Expo Center did close down, we did those casino shows. Were you a part of those up at the uh, Double Eagle Hotel and Casino up in uh, Cripple Creek? No, I mean, no, I was. You were a part I, of those. Mm -mm, I was I, at a. I did a new era show in like some old school town. I could have sworn you were. Um, anyway, I may have been. I may. Yeah, have who been. knows? Was, uh, I, everybody got drunk and basically cost me that gig. So, um, oh, then I definitely wasn't. So we're we're, we're I, I wanted to keep the show going. You know how it is. The show must go on. Yep. And I always told myself I would never run a damn wrestling show that had basketball hoops. I would never freaking do it ever, ever, ever freaking do it. You went off and did the tough enough thing. Every Wednesday, we'd have Marty parties and root you on. You got hurt immediately. I'm thinking, okay, well, they're going to sign him. Didn't th their loss. You came back, and immediately I start thinking, well, we got to work that leg, you know? <laughs> like, we got to yeah, do something. Of course. We got to do something. So we bring you back for one of our anniversary gigs. I don't know. ACW was around for like 13 freaking years. So it's one of them. And, uh, it was actually our ninth anniversary. I don't know how I remember this shit. Is this with but, Dusty? No, not Dustin. That was actually the last show we ever did. Um, this is at that little, uh, the Hillside Community Center. It's like a little gym, basketball hoops. I, it was the worst setup I ever had. I uh, hated I hated every second of it. I couldn't draw flies in that place if I was covered in shit. It was just the worst. And that was the first show we did there. We brought you back. I'm thinking, okay, it's a free show. We're going to do free show. We got Martin coming in. We got all this fun stuff. It's got a wrestling show, live pro wrestling, of course, always at the top of the flyer. I think we drew 100 people. But the ones that stood out the most 
were standing on chairs, lifting up their shirts, showing off their Martin Casals panties. Uh, There's kids everywhere. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't, I didn't know who it was. And then after the show, I seen you guys together. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. Ah, yeah. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, it was funny now. <laughs> it's my future wife. It's my future wife. Now we're actually going to have our, uh, as you can tell, see, I like them fun girls. Um, we're literally going to have our two, our one year anniversary in two days. So, uh, but you sh I got her that tough enough. It was right before it was right when we started hanging out. And then, so then I went to tough enough and I, I had to lie. Cause they told me not to tell anybody that I was going to tough enough. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be gone for like three months. How do I just like not tell anybody I'm gone for three months? Like peace. Like I, I have friends. I have a dating life. Like how how do I do this? And they're like, uh, I don't know. Figure it out. Just you gave me a, a, a kayfabe kind of a hint. Yeah. Oh, I, did I, remember, I? Did I? I, don't I, remember. I remember telling you on the phone, like, oh, cool, man. I'm proud of you. I can't wait to see it. And I didn't know what it was, but I knew you were doing something. And that was the only game in town at that point. So I was like, okay, well, he's doing something. And then, you, like I said, then you pop up on the old Tough Enough next to all the this, who was in that group with you? I don't want to ask you a bunch of shit that everybody asks you, but who was in that? Was Eva Lee in that group with you? She was because we do a TV show with her now for a side TV. Isn't that weird? Like just yeah, the, that's awesome. The breadcrumbs. Or we just we got a brand new episode from uh, Tampa where she's in a glass bottom boat with like feeding fish and shit. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, she was so there. The show she's feeding fish for the show. No, it's just an adventure travel show called Eva Lee's, uh -huh. and it's food, adventures, travel, uh, and she does a good job, man. I, I like her. I don't give a shit attitude. She's not like that. Hi, I'm Eva Lee's, and we're here in St. Petersburg, and we're going to be on our kayak today, and it's going to be great. Join me. She's more like, yeah, that's right, motherfucker, I'm here, and uh, let's do it. You know, she's very matter of fact. You know her. She's Eva Lee's. Yeah. Yeah, she's, absolutely, and I dig that because it's different, and uh, she's she's a cool person. I'm glad to become a friend of hers, but it's just so weird that there's so many people on that cast that, uh, and that was the best season of any Tough Enough they've ever done. I literally, that's the only one I've ever seen, to be honest. I tried so <laughs> hard once I knew that, like, I might be on the show. I tried to find anything on YouTube. I even bought, like, the one with the Miz on it to try and watch it, and then I, I got the tape, and then just never watched it. Uh, but that's the only one I've ever actually seen. I thought it was a little bit ridiculous. We were in cheerleading outfits and stuff, but like, <laughs> all right, whatever gimmick it is. <laughs> um, but I had to tell K favorite from everybody. And so I told my wife, I was at that time a stockbroker. And I told my wife, I was working for Fidelity Investments. And I'm like, I'm going to go to move to uh, California for a couple months. And I'm going to help them open up a Fidelity branch so they can help people in California. Um, she's like, okay. But she had no idea, like, I had no phone because they took away our phones. And that was for for a little bit of time. Uh, so I always give her shit that when I come back, I came back and then I was on TV already. Like, it showed the commercials and stuff after my injury. And uh, everybody, the cat was out of the bag by the time I came back. But it was probably six months after that is when I came back too early for my ankle injury. But when I walked out from my ankle injury for my first match back from Tough Enough, it was her, it was my wife, and a few of her friends all had Martin Casals underwear, panties, and they just yeah. pulled down. It was their pants this time. They pulled down their pants, and they, I was like, this is great. I love wrestling. I want to do this forever. If this, <laughs> so, and, and so that's funny. I totally forgot they did it in, Col in, in Colorado as well. I totally forgot about that. Well, here's the thing. Honest. If it wasn't for them, it would have been crickets. Like it didn't matter what we put. In. <laughs> so I, I was grateful for. If it wasn't for them and the people complaining about them, it would have been just complete dead silence. So I'll take what I can get. And uh, yeah, thank you, wife. It, it, wifey, she makes memories. She makes isn't memories. It, isn't it uh, weird that uh, 15 years later, is it or whatever? How many many years later, you're still kind of getting that tough enough rub, man. It wasn't. Uh, and here's the thing: you've done so much more. And we'll get into that, but. You're still getting that. It's still on the on the on the banner behind the autograph signings. It's still, you know, in the bio, so to speak. It is, yeah. In fact, like I was surprised because I went and did some AEW stuff last year while the pandemic was going on. I uh, went there, and most of those guys are Lucha Underground guys. So I'm like, oh, okay. And then all the people that I was meeting, not meeting for the first time, but 
uh, was that I hadn't seen in a long time. They're like, oh, you're that guy from Tough Enough. I'm like, what? <laughs> you got Phoenix in here and Penta from here and and all Sammy Guevara from here, all these people from Lucha. But you remember me from a show 10 years ago where I had short hair, shaved face, and probably 50 pounds. No, geez, 150 pounds. A lot less weight than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try to mount that shit. Yeah. Let's see. I'm what? 250 now, and I was 100. 99 on tough enough wow so what's I, that math somebody math it's 150 pounds right i got an uh, echo That's over 50. here we can ask i don't do math anymore i just ask alexa and she tells me shit um that was the only time and i was trying to think of a time when you and i ever had a i mean 15 years is a long time have we been mm -hmm. best friends the whole time no of course not we're busy people but i was trying to think of one time that i had a crossed word with you and i don't think we did ever i don't think we ever have what i mean and well, we did a lot. Of, we did a lot of business too. I mean, we're, you're talking years, um, and I, I appreciate that so much. It goes back to just the genuine thing. I've always been straight with you. You've always been straight with me, uh, for better or worse. The only time I was ever let down by you was when you told me you're going to Lucha Underground, because I think you said something like, "I have a seven year contract, and I ah. can't, I can't be on any TV or something like that." And I'm like. Well, fire there goes Martin. <laughs> yeah. he, was like my, he was my guy. He was like my champion at that point or something. I'm like, okay. Um, well, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, bye. <laughs> you know, <I> was like, <laughs> and here's the thing. That was a selfishness of me. Cause I didn't know what the hell Lucha underground was or L Ray network was. I don't even think that was a thing when you said it, you know, that's what was happening. I think it right. launched with that, didn't it? Or something like that. I, I, I know nothing about it. I've never watched it. I've never watched the show. Yeah, I, I've only literally watched the show, the the parts that I'm in. I haven't watched more than that, to be honest. And and that's literally because of like, hey, I can make this better, or hey, I can do this and the acting scenes better. But it was so different because like we had time travel. We had literal lizards getting their heads cut off. That's we why had... I didn't watch it. I watched one episode. I was like, what? Come on. I'm that old, <laughs> I'm that old school guy from the 80s. I'm like, okay, this is too much. It's just, I didn't like the cinematic backstage stuff. It, 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 it some of it was, I just, I don't know. I didn't like, and this is just my opinion. People, oh, it was the greatest thing ever. Maybe to you it was, but I was so happy though when I saw you show up and you got to be this maniacal pillman character and it was, uh, and I always saw that in you. And I was like, okay, finally, he's getting to do so. I don't know about the name. Did you name yourself Marty the Moth? Or No, I definitely didn't pick that name. Okay. <laughs> that's, why it has, not. that's why it hasn't aged with you, I take it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, was, no. I was like, Marty Casas is a great name, you know? And I remember you and I would get, uh, even before that, maybe it was after that, we would talk about gimmick ideas for sometimes hours. And I, I always wanted, like, after Tough Enough, I always wanted you to go on a campaign, like, as this entitled dick who just thinks he earned, you know, deserves everything. And I always thought that would be a lot of fun. And, but then when you did the Marty the Moss, I thought, yes, he's a psychopath. That's perfect. And, uh, yeah, I love that stuff. Uh, tell me about your uh, time in uh, the, the Lucha Underground that, uh, you know, the stuff that we didn't get to see. No joke. Uh, that was literally pitched to me, like, two, three weeks ago about you should... I know it's been 10 years, but you should still be the guy that's upset that you didn't win, that you, you think you won tough enough because you never, you hung up your own belt. And so therefore you're still in it. And so you're going to go and kill all the tough enough guys. And I, so that was literally pitched to me by one of my friends. Cause I'm still always throwing around ideas. I, I, there's no reason for Marty the moth anymore. Cause there's no Lucha underground to, to attach myself to a moth tribe. And I don't, Yippee ki -yay, go think about Moss when I go to sleep, but I can still do all the characteristics um, and just change, keep my name. That's everybody new and tough enough. So, uh, but that's still 10 years later is still getting pitched ideas for tough enough. Maybe I should just run with it now. Maybe, maybe, hmm. maybe, maybe you start a new thing called tough Lucha or uh, Lucha tough underground enough or whatever. I, yeah, Lucha, <laughs> Lucha tough. Yeah. Lucha tough. That'd be yes. Oh, yes. I, I forgot. Um, my chat reminded me here. You said talk about uh lucha and stuff, maybe that you guys haven't heard. I've said it before, so in case you guys have seen interviews, then I you probably have heard it. But um, they gave me the name Marty the Moth. He literally came up to me and said, Hey, uh, it was after an injury, I got a concussion, 
and so I was out most of the first season. So that's why for the first season you saw like two snippets of me and then a thing on the season finale of me kidnapping a girl and let your imagination run from there. Um, I well, well, let's I go back to, to that conversation though. Your name is, and I, I here's as a promoter, I given people, I called somebody the cookie man once doused him with flour, this big fat guy who couldn't work, gave him a sheet of cookies, said, pass them out to the kids and go in there and job in 15 seconds. He was a cookie man. He came out to see is for cookie. To, it was terrible, but awesomely terrible. So I've had this conversation with people. What was your response when they said, Hey, you're Marty, the moth. <laughs> um, uh, it was a shot at TV. So I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. that's <laughs> yeah, what I'm talking I'll... about though. That's what I'm talking about. This freaking genuine, like easy to work with breath of fresh air type of guy. You wish at some point you were a bigger dick in your career. Cause it seems to pay off a lot quite often, to be honest with you. It seems like it. And, and sometimes I feel like I just need, I didn't have the confidence in myself until more recently within the last year, year and a half or so to maybe stick up for myself a little bit more. Um, in the case of the, the Lucha Underground stuff, before this, they were literally going to make me Marty the Magician. My chat is reminding me over here about Marty the Magician. Um, I had one match like that. It was a top hat. And they're like, hey, we're going to make you Marty the Magi Magician. And we're going to give you this girl who's going to be like your Vanna White. I'm like, awesome. I get to work with this girl. She ended up being beautiful Brenda on the show. Um, but we ended up having one match. And it was against uh, Cuerno, who is somebody in chat. Tell me Cuerno is in the WWE right now as Escobar. Um, had a bunch of matches with him. Um, but for some reason that day, uh, whatever happened. Um, we're, we're wrestling. And like I'm like, okay, I'm Marty the Magician. What can I do to make this work? Because it's if someone gives you something, it's I believe it's your job to... Make it work to the best of your ability. It's just like I got Marty the Moth, I got Marty the Magician, and both of those sound like utter shit. So I'm like, how am I going to make either of these look good? I so want to see of, Marty the Magician now. And here's the thing: I wish you would have gone with that over Marty the Moth because that could be another whole freaking career. By this time in ten years, you would have known tricks. You would have been sawing people in half and pulling. I would have been Chris fucking Angel. That's what would have exactly. Transferred <laughs> into something. I think that was a lost opportunity right there. To be honest, I am very glad that opportunity slipped by me. Very glad. <laughs> but think of all the cool hats you'd have by now, just somewhere in a by the piano back there. You know, that by the piano, just a collection of of, of hats. Yeah. <laughs> I got a hat oh. rack with no hats. I'll give you my hat rack. Well, see, there we go. See, um, we'll, we'll go back. If you can invent a time machine, I'll be Marty the Magician, and Marty the Moth would have never happened. That'd be an interesting twist. I don't I know would. if it would have worked, because I don't have any mag magic skills in me. But you um, would have. He literally made me, he's like, hey, I just wanted you to make people laugh. I'm like, hell yeah. Making people laugh, that's the shit I do. Team Shake It. So I'm like, all right, because that's all Team Shake It was. It's just like, what kind of stupid shit can we do uh, that will make people giggle? Um, and so we, we did, and a lot of it was Josh's ideas. Most of the most of sexual stuff anyway. Um, but Martin the magician, like I, I wanted to make it work. So they're like, okay, well, and go. I'm like, well, do I have a costume or anything? Just wear what you're wearing. I'm like, this doesn't look like a magician. Um, so I'm like, do you give me like, here's a hat. They gave me a magician's hat and they went and bought him. Like, okay. Do you have a cape or something? Like, we don't have a cape. I'm like, there's a shower curtain right there. I'm like, well, that's a shower curtain. I'm like, well, it could be a cape too if you give it to me. Let me have the shower curtain. They're like, no, we can't. We can't let you have, just wear a shower curtain out on TV. I'm like, the fuck you can't. They won't be able to know. Just let me wear the shower curtain. So I like, it was one of my first fights I ever really got with Lucha Underground where I'm just like, if you guys going to make me be Marty the Magician, I'm going to need all the tools that I can think of to make this work so give me that shower curtain and i brought it up and and fought for it and they finally gave me a cape and it was stupid as hell but it made me feel like more of a magician and uh <laughs> long story short i put, went in there and i made people laugh as much as i could which was the job i remember one time i did something stupid and the executive producer eric van wagen was i i saw him pop and like laugh and curl over and i'm like sweet i'm doing something right make people laugh i could do that 
And then I stood up, I grabbed the rope, I got clotheslined out by Escobar. And when you're flipping like that, you land on your feet, he can hit your head on the mat and you can fall down. Like it, it's easy. I've done you do you do it a million times when you're wrestling. It's just at going out from like a battle royal. But the Lucha Underground ring was a little bit taller than what I was used to. So I went, I flipped around, head over heels. And then instead of landing on my feet, I went, and it went completely slipped through and I got whiplash. And of course my head slipped right through the two mats that were together and hit the concrete. So there's blood coming out of my head. No, and no. then, uh, so the next spot we were going to do was he was going to dive on me, but I don't stand up. I just lay there like, like out apparently. And, uh, what does Escobar do? He looks over and makes sure that I'm alive. And <laughs> he sees me laying there and he's like, fuck it. So we hit the ropes, jumped out and fucking sat on me. Anyway, while I'm laying on the ground, I'm like, I'm knocked out. You still jumped on me. You son of a bitch. <coughs> um, but he jumped on me anyways. And, and I ended up getting the match got called after that. Um, I ended up going to the hospital um, and wait. I was, oh yeah, I was wearing my pink peacock gear that i wore to acw before i had a peacock on my peacock and it was bright pink and it was just to make people laugh and uh <laughs> I, I remember being in there i got clothes lined out and then i wake up and i'm in the hospital i'm strapped to the bed and uh i'm in my gear they didn't put a shirt on me or nothing it's just a dude in pink gear and a peacock on his dick chilling in the, in the bed like strapped i'm like why am i strapped like oh uh you were you you were trying to like get back up and keep wrestling I'm like what I'm like yeah <laughs> um so because of that it was a concussion and I couldn't wrestle because of insurance region for like uh some length of time I can't remember if it was weeks or like a month but it was a short a, a, a short period of time but unfortunately Lucha Underground was filmed in a very compressed amount of time so like how how long I did missed it in the film a season it's like a week uh, wasn't it. Uh, no, well, it was the first season was like, um, I feel like it was a month or two months and I could be wrong. It was a month to two months, but it was every other week that we would go in. So it was the best schedule in the world. So like we'd fly in on Thursday, Thursday night, we'd fly in, we'd wrestle on Friday, uh, two episodes, wrestle on Saturday, two episodes, wrestle on Sunday, two episodes. So there's six episodes. You fly back on Monday. Um, you have the week off and you go back and you do it again. And it, and it was like, I feel like it was two months because that was six episodes. However many weeks it worked out. Um, but I, I, by the time they, the insurance would let me wrestle again, I, this season one was damn near over. Like, yeah. I, I learned the, the magic of TV, uh, just working recently with ring of honor before they got sold and all that stuff. Uh, they man, they, they do a pay per view, and then that Monday and Tuesday or whatever it was, they would film six months of television. It was crazy, it just like constant, and they could get away with that really nicely when they didn't have fans. So, right. Uh, what What do you remember about the one thing I did think was cool about uh, Lucha Underground was the uh, the actual arena where the ring was and the the atmosphere of it was. It was kind of like that Wrestling Society X. Do you remember that on MTV mm -hmm. back in the day? I was which my class was on. Okay. He was on. I always thought that was really cool to have that kind of a almost like a Hollywood stage set for it or something with fans, but just, just the, the coolness of it, the way you came down the stairs and everything. That's the only thing I really remember about that, except for uh, you licking your belts. I do lick my belts. You, yes. you like to lick some um, belts. I, I, the way I figured it's just like a kid. If you lick it, you claim it. So I, if I lick the belt, then it's mine. Um, I licked my girlfriend and now we're married for a year now. Hey, I licked that. So you should probably I'm sure you licked this one too, didn't you? One hundred percent I've done some things to that thing. Can you can, look at this thing? Holy crap. This is the you're the last person to hold this belt legit. For like nine years. <laughs> it's a replica belt with mailbox stickers on it. And yep. I paint, I painted the world red because why not? And uh it's just uh I can't but there's an A right here for some reason, just because I had to cover a WWE logo. Uh, isn't it crazy the shit we used to get away with <laughs> but this is yeah. the same belt that dr destiny williams retired with you know what i mean so it's uh i still have it here and uh yeah yours it's still yours yeah yeah so in case acw comes back you know who to call mm -hmm. 
let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because um, <clears throat> if I was to bring Asylum, it wouldn't be Asylum Championship Wrestling. It'd just be Asylum Wrestling. And it would be a television product, kind of like what Lucha Underground was. We would spend; it would be mostly filmed backstage. It's it, it, there's matches, of course, but we'd film probably four months at a time, you know, and have a three day weekend and have a blast. And if that does happen, uh, I have this Asai TV thing that I really have to concentrate on because we're getting raid launch, whatever, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But Ooh, tell me about that. I've been talking to Mike Bennett uh, a lot about because Maria, who's this is this is this is what wrestling does to you, okay? I was done in 2013 when we folded up with the uh, we the last match was you and the Quinn people versus me, Candyman, and Gold Dust. I had that no idea that was the last the like show. Last ever match in ACW 2013. That was it. I I so wish that was on the internet. I, I hope it that's is. on the internet somewhere. It is it's it? on the internet, yeah. I'll send you I gotta go find, find that. Find Please it. do. And it ended up with you and Dustin. You guys had a great little flowing, nice, beautiful thing there. We had some fun spots with Dean doing the old 69 gimmick and all that. It was a, it was a really fun match. It was one of my most fun ones. And it was the last one we ever did. Uh, but I, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to have, I don't care about, I want, if I'll have my own venue, I'll film a shit ton of television and then it goes on a side TV. And that's really the direction that I would be uh, wanting to do. And of course, I've told you this many times. One of the first phone calls I make would be to you. Um, I would love to pick it up because you know me. I'm a storyline guy. Unlike the convention. <clears throat> Unlike when you change the convention date That's on me. Really loud. Oh, my, <laughs> my Comic-Con event. Uh, I, I did not change that date. That was changed on me. They were doing bu- ah. building building construction. And they said, well, we may might be open as soon as they said might i'm like no 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 it, yeah it's not good i'm putting my life into this comic-con event and it's called the super ultra megacon december 10th and 11th we got the christmas rub now rocky mountain pro will be there both nights um back to maria she's doing the women's wrestling army gimmick and i'm trying to uh it's but i was gonna say wrestling sucks you back in it just I'm sucks sure. you in like a freaking vacuum it's just, here you go brandon you want to get away from the wrestling <laughs> here you go you son of a bitch and now we've done tv shows with like heath slater miller whatever you want to call him we do heath house with him on a side tv do you we do the bennett's with mike and maria we have uh lita amy duma we do her ufo show eva lee's doc gallows we do uh there's so many if i leave somebody out and they watch this they'll be pissed off at me but um there's so many. We've even been talking about doing stuff. We do stuff with Ryzen, Rob Ryzen, the, the bad people, bad places, bad things. We do, uh, and it's all so many freaking wrestlers, dude. And it sucked me back in. It's sucking me back in. So Maria has an all-female program now called Women's Wrestling Army. Great show. We just filmed in Providence, and uh, I might be on board with them pretty soon. But I'm trying to get Mike, who I don't know. Do you know Mike Bennett very well? uh i know of him I, and i've met him like a couple times but like not tight tight if you watch his stuff since getting back to the indies and his stuff in ring of honor even now on impact wrestling easily easily one of the best i've ever seen in the ring period Absolutely. period and i'm trying to get him to do like a male version of what his wife is doing for the females and i'm like please let me do this so if that happens that would be asylum wrestling and yes you will be getting a phone call and uh, I, I pitch you to them all the time, dude. I'm, and I don't even know if you were healthy or not. I'm like, have you seen Martin? It's uh, like, but you're one of my favorite guys on the Indies. Um, when Lucha did shut down, um, was it a heartbreak for you or was it something you knew was going to happen? Um, by the time it actually did shut down, I was already, I want to say over it, but like every single time we ended a season, that was the last season. We're not coming back. Cause we, we shot season one and two within the same year, but it was like months apart. And there was no like, hey, we'll be back at this time. There's just, we're done. And then you go home and you just hear nothing. And they're like, I hope there's a season two. And then when that happens, I hope there's a season three. And when that happened, I hope there's a season four. Um, so by the time that happened, I was kind of like used to not expecting there to be another season. But definitely when it was finalized, it was not coming back because I still hear rumors. Hey, it's coming back. This person is going to try it. MLW is trying to do a version of it right now. Um, Like I keep hearing for years that it's going to be coming back in some capacity. It's not. It's not. It's definitely not in the same way. Um, 
but I loved it because it was so interesting. Back to where you're talking about sets, that was actually a Hollywood set that they filmed Saw on. Oh, really? So, like, yeah, the, the first Saw movie where they're in the bathroom and he cuts off his leg or whatever, me and Johnny Mundo were taking showers um in that in that, <laughs> in that shower not together but like um in that shower and they didn't well, let's have talk about water. that for a second huh? <laughs> uh but yeah it was i loved being there because i do enjoy i love acting i love making films i have a production company company out here called thousand mile pictures i love making content well what's that and uh, what's um it's me making content actually uh we just did a uh, buddy cop uh, series. Um, we're going to take it to some film festivals and we're going to take that to uh, some banks for proof of concept so we can do our full feature film. Are you acting so, or are you uh, producing all of the above? All of the above, yes. So I, I, I know a guy that has a network that's available in 200 million homes. Just saying. Just saying. I could throw that past my guy. I know she was planning on taking it to some investment, some uh, fairs or festivals, film festivals. And you see, this is where I have smarter people around me than, than me in this industry of film. She's like, okay, we'll go to all these film festivals. Um, but because of that, we can't show it like on YouTube and stuff like that. Like I right, want to hear the rap all the time. I know exactly. It's like when Netflix puts a hold on you and you can't do shit for a year because they think they might do something. It's my friends right. get victimized all the time. And I, I, I hope it works out for you. I do. If you need a fallback place, a side TV's right here. We got all, all kinds of shit going on right now. So we're always looking for, and, and it, it's a content world. I don't like using yes. the word content. I like to be more direct uh, saying, oh, I'm doing a YouTube show. I'm doing a, you know, the Asai TV life YouTube show. I'm doing a television show. I'm filming a movie. We're filming a movie called evil tacos in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee and shit like a month and a half. So, I mean, I just, when it's, when you say content, I almost when people say content, I almost think of porn. <laughs> I guess the first thing that comes content. to my mind. It is. It it's, is. That's, I think that's the first way, time I've ever heard. I, I did a like a this is another whole freaking story, but when I was in my early 20s and I had long, beautiful hair and everything, I, I got into that for a little bit. And that's the word they used was we need to get this content and content and content. So that stuck with me. Like the word content with, <laughs> with porn, you know. I'm thinking it's of beautiful. like yeah, cameras being shoved in places you don't really. Oh, yeah, well, some people like the to fill in, um, but to, to think about it, look, let's wrestling and porn has almost the same path. And wrestling and entertainment, porn stars, it's all an entertainment path. You make as much content as possible. You get as many people as you can to watch it, and you can and you find ways to monetize it. That's it's all the same thing. It's just I was talking, I was talking to my friend this morning uh, at her job. Uh, she's a burlesque dancer. And she's asking yep. me because I'm a business guy. And I'm like, it's pro wrestling. It's all it is. It's you make yourself a promotional package. You make yourself a business and you treat it like a business. Yeah, you could be passionate, whatever. Save that for the ring, but or save yep. that for the stage. But everything else is business. And that's what all these young kids go. And I'm, you know, I can say that now. I'm 47 and you're, <laughs> I don't know how old you are nowadays. I've always been way older than you, but you, you, you got to look back because you've been doing this for 20 years now you got to look back at these you know younger guys and that has to be one of the nuggets of information you pass down is to treat this like a freaking business yes treat it like a business and you are a business so the one of the crappy things about becoming a professional wrestler which you don't hear about is yes there's the passion for the business and i could do a sweet drop kick and i could do a sweet promo cool if you can't Find a way to film that and package that and send that to a promoter who's who's going to hire you to do that said thing. Then no one's going to care. If no one sees it, no one cares. So you now not only just have to be a good wrestler and a promo guy, but you have to be a good business, a good promoter yourself of your own brand now of doing all this set the the follow up calls with promoters the dealing with hey now this show is canceled now i have a free weekend i got to try and figure out how to fill that all this stuff that doesn't involve you ever being in a wrestling ring anybody can do a freaking drop kick yes it, it, you may think i used to tell you know josh michaels uh trajan ender whatever the hell he calls yep. himself uh love the guy but i remember when we first started talking i pissed him off because i said i told him straight up dude there's a thousand of you. How are that we gonna? Good. How are we gonna make you different? Uh -huh. 
But if you go in there thinking I'm one of a kind, you're not, you're not, there's a thousand, right. you know what I mean? And if you're really good, then there's a hundred of you, you know, it's, you, you, you have to, uh, you just, you have to promote yourself. It's all about, you could paint a picture. It could be beautiful, but telling the story behind it, that's what sells it in an art gallery. So it's, it's the same freaking thing. Like you said, it's, a, it's, a, everything's pro wrestling. It's it, exactly everything is life is a work. Life is all a work. Um, uh, but the WWE said the exact same thing. What's going to make you stick out? There's thousands of you across the world in every single state. Like what's going to make you stick out from Joe Blow Hickabobbins from Idaho? So it's true. You got to do that business aspect of, of this whole thing, like creating a whole freaking network for yourself in, in order for anything to happen. It's a lot it's, better than taking bumps. I'll tell you that, brother. Oh, see, and that's what I want to try right now. That's why, because I love, I love wrestling. I don't like, I, I will, I remember I used to say, I like taking bumps. I, I have gotten older now and I don't, I don't <laughs> I'm like, we're going to tell a story, kid. You do your flippity flips and I'll just kick your ass on the way down. Sounds there's, good. There's been a couple times when I was filming with Gallows doing the talking shop shit. Um, he had a ring in his backyard where they filmed the talking shop of mania stuff. Yep. And, and I was filming the documentary for all that. And it was, I was like, Oh, a ring. Look at me. You know, I haven't been in a ring in a couple of years, whatever I can, you know, those ropes I, were the hardest. They were literally like taking <sighs> baseball bats, three of them to my back every time I hit the ropes. And cause I was, you know, gung home trying to impress them. You know, everybody in the world, you got the Steiners over there. You got the freaking powers of pain over there, Teddy long. And I'm just sitting there goofing around in the ring, but you don't want to look like an asshole. So I'm like, okay, and just get this little, do a little run and run. Oh God. Okay. Then he take a pop. Oh my God. It's like, it's, it's the callousing is gone. You know what I mean? Yep. That, that, that is the memory is, it does not remain. Uh, and it, uh, you, you got to fake it. Like, oh, that was, that was awesome. Thanks. And then, um, I did the same thing in Ring of Honor. I was just goofing around with some, you know, their guys in, in the training in the dojo, and did the same thing. I mean, oh god, this is crazy. This is I'm not this guy anymore. So, you took some time off between Lucha Underground. I don't know what what did you do between Lucha Underground and like the recent AEW stuff. I know you did a lot of indie stuff. I know you've been with Rocky Mountain Pro. I, I, I I'm a friend of yours, so I see your shit, but I don't. I there's nothing what, what's what's going on in that gap right there because I think that's the question mark gap. Uh the gap is horrible branding. Um because the Did year after branding or Brandon? Bra horrible branding. Not oh, yeah, I'm not, okay. I'm not saying you're not horrible, but that's no, not the terrible. case for this one. <laughs> what, did, what, did, what did Josh call me? A hard ass? I'm not a hard ass. I was the nicest guy. Yeah, um, he's kind of a hard guy. You gotta you gotta make sure you impress him so you can keep coming back. And like, maybe he oh, said man. I have a hard ass. That's what it was maybe about. that's it. I have verified it probably that's isn't as, as as hard as it is as it is back in the day. Oh, but, it was really hard back in the day. <laughs> it's a marshmallow spots. back there now. I sit on it editing all day, so that's fun. Uh, I've van, actually found a love life. for editing. I found a love for editing. I was just editing a film right now. Uh, I come out with stuff on my YouTube channel every single week, on every single Wednesday. Hey, hey, hey. YouTube slash Martin Casals. Um, <laughs> but after Lucha Underground ended, I think it was 2017, 2018. I couldn't remember. And my chat was trying to figure it out too. Did Lucha Underground end in 2017 or 2018, guys? Um, I'm jealous. After I'm that. that. <laughs> I, I love having a chat, man. Like yeah, people that is the watching, one thing but I don't have a people. chat. I gotta get a chat, man. Where's my chat? Yeah, you need a chat. What the bullshit. heck, man? You gotta get. You're on YouTube right now, right? It should be a live chat. It's on YouTube and Facebook and another thing and Streamyard and yeah, no chat. I got people watching, but they're not talking to me. Fuck you, people. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so Hill Face says it was 2018. It was 2018 when it ended. So then Vampiro actually got me as a a. They got me into AAA for the next year, year and a half. So I was wrestling in Mexico um, every three weeks or so. Every time they do a pay-per-view or a TV taping, I would go to fly down to Mexico. And I traveled all across Mexico. Uh, and I wrestled Rey Mysterio at Triple Mania in front of 28,000 people. Um, I... Well, don't just, glass, don't just gloss over that. I mean, talk about that day, man. I mean, you're in, you're in Mexico... First of all, for the first time been. ever for the first I've never time ever. Mexico. I know nothing about it. Give me talk, talk about the colors and the smells. Uh, and then, you know, that night you're getting ready to one of the biggest names, if not the obviously the biggest luchador of all times in one of the biggest luchador events at all times. You're not a luchador. 
Um, <laughs> not not yeah. for the most part. I, I've never, I never looked at you once and said, "Oh, he's a luchador." No, I don't even. Yeah, I'm the whitest guy in the locker room. Is what you're yeah. trying to say. Um, I'm the only guy who doesn't really speak English. Did you work uh, left? English. Yeah. Uh, you- I, I could. I haven't had a lot of experience with it, but all my year and a half of working AAA, I never had to. Because we did hold to hold for like 0.2 seconds and they just started whapping each other. <laughs> and what I and- mean by working left is Americans, they are on the different side of the person. You know what I mean? They work differently and it's something that always befuddled me. It's like, it's like going to England and driving like you would drive in the United States. Like, Oh, this is completely different. Right? The steering wheel's on this side. Okay, uh, it's it's a lot like that, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's just in America we work on the left, on the, in Mexico they work on the right. So, um, but it was it was right after Lucha Underground ended. So I was even thinking about like Lucha Underground was going to be ending. Uh, they took us down for a Lucha Underground match at Triple Mania. There was twenty eight thousand people. It's my first time in Mexico. Um, and down there with Vampiro. Uh, Jeff Cobb, who is Matanza, he's in killing it in New Japan right now. Um, New Japan and Mil Muertes from Lucha Underground. And then it was versus Rey Mysterio, Rey Horace from Ring of Honor, and Ricochet, who is, I think, the Intercontinental Champion right now in the WWE. Um, so, like, I know this match is going to be easy. I've wrestled all these guys a bunch before. So, uh, this match could be cool. But then we go out there. There's 28,000 people. Uh, it's a Lucha Underground match. It was, it's probably the highlight. One of the, probably, if not the highlight, one of definitely the highlights of my wrestling career. Besides your your day. time in ACW, of course. Well, being a nine year champion of ACW has got to be up there pretty high, right? Dude, next you're, to you're pushing you're pushing Bruno numbers at this point. Okay, I'm going to try and beat Bruno's numbers. Okay, right, well, we're not we're not coming back anytime soon. So, and there's no. Uh, like unwritten law where you have to do it every 30 days, like defend the title. So it's, yeah, you're still the champ in my book, man. It's I'm still the champ in my book and in the history books of ACW. Exactly. And th- those books are <laughs> this, <laughs> this long. Go to any library right now. You can rent them out. Um, All the defenses that I've had. Mott Boy says hi and says there's two great guys talking here. Oh, so, who's that? Uh, Mott Boy is one of our awesome record wrestler out of Rocky Mountain Pro. Oh, no um, Buddha sightings, huh? Because you and Buddha have been pretty tight. Yes, ever since. He came to my wedding, actually. Yeah, um, thanks for the invite. <laughs> but I, we don't, remember how we haven't talked in ages, and I'm glad this is happening now? <laughs> um, and I had a limit to how many people I could get in there because there, we had a few. There's no everybody. way I would have gone unless I got hired to film it or something. I just, I, I'm just... Uh, what do they call that? A dick. That's right. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. Well, that works. That makes you feel a little bit better. I'm the same way with I, funerals too. I can't handle funerals. Not because I just, I just don't want to be around all the sadness of a funeral or a wedding. I suck at the sadness <laughs> of a wedding. <laughs> Actually, Josh Sipple came to my wedding and coerced me into, have you ever seen Blue Mountain State? Uh, uh Is it the... It's a Dan, football show. Dan, oh, what is ah, maybe yeah, it's, a, it's a football show. I don't even remember what network it was on. It was a um, movie though, right? It was a movie too. It did okay. come out the movie. Um, now my chat's giving me shit for not inviting to my wedding. You guys all go fuck yourselves as well. <laughs> I gave him um, this big break, man. You know, he coerced me into doing a cookie butt run um after my wedding in my wedding venue. And I'm letting you imagine it and picture it because it's probably exactly what you're thinking. Uh, we took a cookie, we held it not with our hands and it was a race to the other end. And whoever lost that race had to eat the cookie from, from all participants. And Ooh. I, I didn't win. I, I won. I 100% was not going to lose that race on my wedding day. Uh-oh. That was not going to be the way to start out my, my marriage. So, uh, yeah, Josh, well, Sipple, ask, always- ask cookie mouth can really ruin a, a honeymoon. <laughs> you got yeah, it- cookie mouth. It's. That's I didn't even think mouth. about that actually. Ask Cookie Mouth. Ask Cookie Mouth. <laughs> Is he saying that like the sadness of a wrestling wedding? Not luckily, I didn't. Oh my <laughs> god! My, so I streamed my wedding. So okay, going back to your question, well, there's so many tangents. We haven't talked in years, so there's so many things to catch up on. I feel like. Um, oh shit! What was I was gonna say. What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? We were on it. I we were going back to it. Ask Cookie. Uh, mouth. What was that gone? Uh, Ask Cookie. Yeah, that that happened. And uh, unfortunately, no one got any footage of it, so I could put it in the vlog. But the time frame between after Lucha Underground to 2020 is what you're asking about. Yeah, um, I just uh, you disappeared from everybody's radar for the most part, unless you're in Mexico, I guess. And 
I'm a, uh, here's the thing. You're, you're, you're one of those people where you're, you're only a couple thoughts away from my brain. Does that make sense? Sure. Like there's, there's hundreds of people like that, but it, you, I consider your friend to this point where I give a shit enough to be like, what happened to Martin? Like, where's, what is he doing? Cause not only that, but in the wrestling game, as far as my personal connection, connection, not connections, but my personal experiences of working with people, you're one of the very best. So it drives me crazy when you're not on my damn TV every single week. <laughs> and when you're just not anywhere, I'm like, okay, what the, is he hurt? Like, what? and I did get hurt actually. Um, so after Lucha Underground ended 2018, my chat says, uh, I spent the year, year and a half, thanks to Vampiro. So thank you, Vampiro. Um, he took me to Mexico. Um, I ended up wrestling at Triple Mania, which is their WrestleMania. Um, and then pretty much staying with them for pretty much a year. It was awesome. There was so many states in Mexico that I wrestled for that I can't even say or or, or couldn't even repeat to you now. But it was, it was an amazing time for me because um, there's every single time you do tri AAA is the WWE of Mexico, essentially. So every single time I showed up to a pay-per-view, there was thousands of people there. And then, like I said, Triple Mania was 28,000. And that's still the record for how many people I've ever wrestled in front of. And I don't know many other venues where there's more than 28,000 people, except for maybe WrestleMania itself. Um, but I, I wrestled in Mexico for a year and a half. Um, and then during that time, I wanted to see what else I could do because I know I can't fall down forever. Um, I, I, that's why I chased my passion of, oh, oh yeah, huh, I got fired from being a stockbroker. That's what happened. I was a stockbroker for Fidelity Investments. And uh, my wife's like, well, if you want to make this dream happen, it's now or never. I'm like, well, we're going to fucking make this dream happen. And so I started to wrestle a lot more. And that was, of course, all mostly in Mexico. Uh, a lot of the Midwest of the United States. I was still wrestling a lot in the United States because I was only there like once a month. Or you were a stockbroker when month. I met you. Yes, correct. So you're talking, you were doing that job for like 20 freaking years. Uh, 50, uh I spent 15 years in finance, 10 years as a stockbroker, and 15 as a reg five at a regular bank. So at least 15 years in finance. There's probably more, but I can't remember the. You're bank not just stuff. a pretty face. You got the smarts. Yeah, I well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually. So, um, yeah, I, I do. So, like I said, I'm trying to buy my third house right now and create some some rental income. I have a rental property right now. I'm. That's why I've been gone recently. That's why my chat hasn't seen me very much. Uh, but back to that time frame, uh, I wrestled in Mexico for a while. I started creating these other avenues, like started making more films. Um, I started um, the precursor to what is now my production company and getting with those contacts and becoming doing more film stuff. I, I was in an Adam Sandler movie. Oh, that's uh, right. That's all, oh, dude. I was. Yeah. Very few things in my life. Okay, I'm going to cut you off. I, I, I got to talk about this. We're, we're, er, here we go. Very few things in my life have I been on my couch and I've levitated in joy. <laughs> Jesus, how many how many cans did you just empty, man? Jesus. You know what I'm uh, thirsty, okay? There, the first time I can remember doing it is when Rat, who I've gotten to be good friends with Stephen Piercy and filming his documentaries and stuff since then, but the, the new rat video for lay it down came on MTV when I was a kid. I remember being on the couch sitting and then all of a sudden I'm in the air. I don't even know. How, I don't remember jumping or anything, but then I, <laughs> I was watching the Sandy Wexler. What's it called? Wexler, Sandy Wexler. I've never seen it. You've never so. seen it. It's fantastic. It's one of my no, favorite Adam Sandler it. movies. And then there's this you and I'm just like, I, it happened again. I'm like standing up. Like, I don't remember standing up. I was like, that's, that's freaking Martin. And I was so freaking happy. I was because I've always wanted to be in an Adam. I think I texted you and said I'm pissed off because I always wanted to be in an Adam Sandler movie. I'm <laughs> something like I have to say something smart ass. I can't just of course. Be happy, happy for very you. Brandon of, very there's, Brandon of you. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Oh, happy for you. Congratulations. I'm like, fuck you, dude. That's bullshit. I want to be <laughs> um, but you know the sentiments are the same. But, anyways, of course. Uh, how did, how did was that just a casting agent or was that just a uh, hey, we need a wrestler and you happen to be at the right place, right time? No, actually, it was from a contact from that girl that I went to high school with. She is doing stunts right now um, for like uh, NCIS um, and all these like big movies. And so she's been a stunt girl and she's like, hey, we haven't talked in a really long time. 
Um, but this casting agent is looking for wrestlers. And so he's like, I feel like you should apply. I'm like, okay. Um, so I put in my stuff and I actually got a job for Kevin Cross um, as well. So he did the movie with me. I mean, if you go back and watch Sandy Wexler, you'll see Kevin Cross in there too. Spoiler for the chat. Um, and uh, I, I got him the job. And when I got there, it was my buddy, rest in peace, Shad. He's like, dude, I saw your name. I grabbed you immediately. I'm like, this guy's got to work on the movie with me. I'm like, all right, Shad. Hell yeah. So it was me and Shad and Kevin Cross in California for a week teaching Terry Crews how to wrestle in a professional wrestling ring uh, at Rikishi School. It was one of the coolest experiences because they paid me for the week that I was there. Um, the movie happened. I was probably in it for, if you blink, you miss it. And definitely if you blink, you, you miss Kevin Cross because like you don't even see his face on the, on the show. They, they paid me an extra 500 bucks if I shaved my face and, and took another move. I'm like, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You do that for 25 bucks if the, if the yeah. promotion talks you into it. Right? Yes. Oh, and New, New Jersey Breeze Babe also says I was in Ring Warriors as well. Uh, yes, I did another TV wrestling show called Ring Warriors as well. Um, but this Adam Sandler thing, it was it was a blast. I got to talk shit to Adam Sandler um, um, and, and teach Terry Crews how to wrestle for a week. And I got a residual check out of it like probably a year ago. And that yeah. was a couple years. Yeah, it was. It, I got a, one like six months after that. And then I got another one like a year ago. And I was never expecting those. How does um, Netflix do that? What do you get, like a penny? Or <laughs> it was eight hundred bucks. So I will, I'm not going to complain about it. That's a tank of gas now. Shit, it's <laughs> one one, yeah, tank, one of gas. tank of gas. Trust me, I I live in, <laughs> I live in a van half time. Trust me, I know it's. I, I cry myself to sleep at night. But anyway, it's uh that's just dude. That is here's the thing you obviously have a lot of people that give a shit about you have you ever thought about putting all of these memories all these stories into one place here i'm writing i'm a nobody for, for, to the masses out there i i get that but i want that book i'm writing i've been writing it for 20 years i've been writing an autobiography i i can't put it out there because i don't have that ending yet are you kind okay. of feeling that way where it's like, okay, I've done all this stuff. I've done uh, just what you said alone would be the biggest moment of somebody's life. You know what I mean? And it's, mm -hmm. and there's probably 50 of those for you. So there is, I really think, and, and this is me just being selfish and wanting to read it myself. If you started putting pen to paper, if you haven't already tell the, the Martin Casal story, because it's a story. It's a really good one, dude. It needs to be told. Guess what? You're going to be dead in 40 years, okay? And it's not going to make yeah. any freaking difference. And in 100 years, no one's going to know either one of our names. But this book might be around. Your kids, if you have them, or your family will pass that down. And it'll always be on Amazon, which will be around you know, long after the earth blows up and the sun explodes. Um, dude, have you ever thought about that? Or have you already been into the uh, the process? Writing a book, kind of both, kind of both. Um, because I got hit up a couple years ago into a WrestleCon. Um, life is crazy, man. And then someone came up to me, he's like, Oh man, I love your work. I'm helping Sabu with his book. His book just came out. I helped this guy with his book. I want to write your book. Uh, let's work together and let's write a book. I'm like, Cool. So I got a publisher ready to do it. I just, I'm trying to figure out like what to write. Like, I have cool stories for like interviews and shit, but like, what do I write? Like, what is the book about that? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. Okay. When, you, when you're standing at the curtain at triple mania, ready to go out and face Ray Mysterio, that moment right before you go, it, it that is your first paragraph right there. That is your first chapter right there. And then finish that son of a bitch when you're in the ring. <laughs> that could be cool. See, I need to the dogs like it. See, the dogs love it. They got up and just left the room. They're like, I love this so much. I'm going to go. They, they dropped the mic. But like, poof, we're out. <laughs> Nothing else What's needs that? to be said. Rough, rough. Rough, rough. Ray Mysterio the, the, dropped the mic. Peace out. And all the stuff that's happened since then, you can, you know, filter in there. It, people like to read books that go everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, okay, here's there. We're 15 years ahead. Then we're back. And then boom. Here's the moment I met Brandon. Boom. That's like six chapters alone. Like, you know, it's just. They, they like to go everywhere with it and they don't like just the timeline thing. I've learned that just from reading other books. Uh, but I got a publisher too, if you need one. So, I mean, it's really simple stuff. Uh, you want to work with me on this book? No, 
<laughs> because I don't, <laughs> your life. I don't know your life. If you want me to help you get it published, I'll do that today. But it's uh, you just got to get it done first. So see, I could think of a bunch of stories like, "Hey, I did this." I'm trying to I'm trying to get my friends because there's so much. I get got I got kicked in the head a lot, um, and I'm trying to go back, remember all these memories of like the stuff we did at ACW wrestling Dustin for the first time. Uh, like I have someone in my chat right here that moved from Canada, Canada moved down to Texas to go to Dustin's school, just to go to his school. So like wrestling Dustin would be like a, a high point in his life. I've been blessed enough where there's a lot of those high points. There's definitely been some low points, but man, like being able to text on cold Steve Austin to like, dude, Hey, you want to come to my wedding? Um, and, and, and do some of the stuff I've been blessed enough to do. I'd like to be able to write it down, um, but make it something. And I've been trying to well, get those contributions, get those t text them, say, Hey, I'm writing a book. You are a huge part of my life, a huge part of my career. I want just a, a paragraph or two from you. Can you do that for me? Most of them are going to say yes. I did. <laughs> <laughs> all two of them um i i've literally done that exact same thing and i think what i have to do because they're like oh we'll tell it to you if you just write it down i'm like oh, i don't want to write it down that's why i'm asking you to write it down so i just really need to take like a recorder that's what i did i sent people a questionnaire like here just ask them like five questions answer these questions for me in text send it back thank you done don't ask i never ask for anything you tell people hey do this shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i did that and I, I i told two people in particular i'm like hey here's this and here's this i even created a google drive i'm like i'm excited for you to get any of your info and he, he's done nothing and he's like oh we got such great stories i'm like that's great tell them to me i'll change the names in case you're worried about getting in trouble because remember me and this person did some stupid shit in particular that i i don't want their names in there and well it's my story so i had no choice i'm gonna be in there so, uh, but I could change names and make everything so everybody feels safe. But I, this guy told me, came up, approached me like, Hey, I want to write your story. I think you should write a book. And, and I, I've been on that and sitting on that for years. And, uh, so I've been doing more vlogs and stuff like that. Cause like you said, in 40 years from now, hopefully I'm still alive, but I'm not gonna remember what the fuck I did three weeks ago. Um, so I can go back and watch the vlogs on YouTube. Um, so that's why I started creating more vlogs so I can remember what the heck I can do, but I've really been thinking about writing this book. And the problem is, is I just, I hate sitting down and writing things. Like if I could just say it like this, maybe to whoever, um, or get my friend on a podcast like this and just say it and he writes it and no, really then cool. make it, hmm. these, fo these phones have a little microphone button right here. Yeah. Just click it. Yeah, see, I'm still it. trying to figure. Look at this. You said you were old and barely knew how to work phones, and now you're over here teaching me shit. It, it's funny see, what you accidentally hit once in a while. Like, oh, what is that? Oh, <laughs> oh, shit! It's 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 repeating everything I say. This is it's, it's, stop. Oh yeah, the, the yeah. Pre predict to text is never is never right. Talk um, about but, a a AEW real quick because that'll be in okay, the book, I, right? Ah, uh, yeah, it would have to be. It would have to be. Um. Why aren't you on there every Wednesday night or Friday or whatever dark bullshit they're doing? Uh, that's a question for Tony Khan. I think that uh, he he'll have the answer rather than me. Um, well, let's call him real quick. Yeah, I, that's a phone number I don't have, unfortunately. Um, is I don't have Tony Khan's. I got Steve Austin. I got Rey Mysterio. I got many other Chavo and it, all have Steve people. Austin call him. I don't know if Steve. Well, I'm sure Steve Austin could probably get his number pretty a lot easier than I probably could. <laughs> It would be the best phone call ever because Tony would be like, oh, my God, Steve Austin, how you doing? What's going on? Hey, do you mind uh, booking this Martin guy? <laughs> <laughs> Book him again. <laughs> yeah, shit, that'd be great. Steve, put in a word for me, all right? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I just got raided. Thanks, Transgamer, for the, for the raid. Hi, Rick. Sorry, I, I, I do have people in my chat and not ignoring, but I told him I was going to You're taking money right now? This is bullshit. Okay. I love Twitch, man. This is why I love Twitch because like, I am monetized. You guys can send me super chats and I'll give it to charity or something. But it's here's the sad part you made me jealous because my YouTube, I put all my Lucha on a lot of Lucha Underground stuff on there, but because it's not me doing the footage, it's still my face bleeding everywhere. They won't let me monetize that oh, yeah. footage because it's not my property. It's my bleeding face, but not my property. So now I have to go back and like 
watch the stuff on my Twitch channel and like talk about it, uh, which is great. It's fun for my community and it's fun to go back and relive that. Uh, but I, less people want to go and hear that stuff. Some people just want to go on YouTube and watch wrestling. And I had to take those matches off my YouTube because it was non cop. It was not my, my stuff is repurposed content. And so they wouldn't monetize me. And now I'm getting shit for views because a lot of my views was for that triple mania match against Rey Mysterio um, in front of in Mexico. So I'm kind of really sad. Holy shit. Speaking of Rocky mountain pro, I just got rated with 44 people. You beautiful wow. guys. What, what is that? Uh, rated as with a T or rated as in like, I'm being rated by Vikings. Rated by Vikings. Is that what it like, is? Yeah, like straight up. It's rated by Vikings. Hi, guys. Uh, sorry, I'm going to do this real quick. Hi, guys. I'm doing a radio interview with Brandon Bishop here. Hey. Um, we are on, we're talking on the Asai Network YouTube channel, which you should all go check out. What's that link again, Brandon? Well, uh, the YouTube channel is ASY, Asai TV, which is the doormat for the actual Asai TV network, which is like the mom and pop shop of streaming television. You've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got Amazon Prime, you've got HBO Max, you've got all these different little streaming, streaming, plus, plus, max, max, boom, boom. But we're Asai TV. We're the mom and pop shop. We need you. We love you. So go to uh, find Asai TV on Roku, Amazon, Fire Stick, Apple TV, or at ASYTV.com, AsaiTV.com. It's five bucks a month. Holy crap, what a bargain. All your favorite stars are on there and a bunch of homegrown talent. Hopefully Martin will be as well. So we will talk I about will that. Be, there's gonna be, we've been talking about this. We're going to have a show soon. We and should. I'm excited for it. We you should. See, We're going to have a I show. Don't bug everybody I know about this stuff, okay? I like when I met Heath, I'm like, okay, come on. This guy needs his own show because he's a freaking, he's a chaos. He's, Heath is just, he, what you see for Heath Slater on TV, that is Heath. Yes. He's a, he's a guy who will make you laugh every single minute you hang out with him, but he can also beat the crap out of you. He's a legit badass. I love him. I love his whole family. His kids are just adorable. Same with the Bennett's. They're just, I, when, I, when I met them, I was like, okay, we got to do something. Now we're six episodes in, you know, and their kids as well. Just um, I had to watch their son Carver screaming during a haircut in Chicago, and it was the best TV ever. You know, it's just fun shit. It's like real stuff. I don't have wrestling on my network. I have people doing real lives, docu series type stuff. But that's what I look at when I see you. I, I keep seeing all your pictures and all these things that you're doing. And I'm like, damn it, dude! Like I. I I want to be there, not just to, you know, hang out with my buddy Martin, but I do, I, I, you have a story to tell. That's why I'm like, get a damn book, man. Get a, get a show. Do you, all the stuff that you're already doing. It's just, you deserve to be in the conversation, man. You know what I'm saying? So I, I agree. And, 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 and I, I got to get that book out. I definitely have to get the book and, and I got to start writing stuff down now or start collecting it while I still remember half these stories. Jaden, I'm going to have to ask you to write down some stories of our stupidity. Like when you and me were going to be uh, strippers uh, in suits uh, at that WWE tryout. So I'm going to need some stories from you, Yaden. Bruce Wayans, welcome, my man. I can't well, shine that belt up for me real nice, will you? It's the you missing the hell Wayans, out of Marty's book. The it's Mrs. The Wayans, brother. That's right. Yeah. The I uglier one. And I'm going to get you, sucker. It's my favorite movie, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the sucker. <laughs> How many people in chat here would read the book? I, we're talking about reading books. Um, you tell them what you book. A book. My book. I have about... three books. Out. I have three books out. If I can really? write three books, you can get. I have three books published. If you, if I can do it and sell them, I guarantee that people are going to want to know your story. God, I definitely got to come out with a book with. If you got one, then right? Shit, so it, I'm like kidding. I'm beating honest, you on something. You are. You are. Um, I I would actually really like to come out with some some digital book. A digital. Some people just downloading on the computer. Like I think that'd be awesome. And then I would love to throw it on Audible um, because I love voiceover work. And Dude, I have audio books are a fucking nightmare to do. Are they? How so? Reading your own book is like, first of all, that's just the worst thing in the world. Because after you <laughs> write it, I, I'm one of the kind of guy, if I write a book, I don't ever want to see it again. My son and I wrote two books together and I, I love them. I love the, what it represents, but I just... You know, you could you could get Billy Fred Whopper goggles and Chicken Snake and Chupacabra Cow on Amazon right now, but for me to sit there and go every in, in my voice, you know, like so. Then the day was it? And it's like, oh my god, I hate everything that I'm doing. And I'll erase it. Now. <laughs> I, I have I have no audio files to offer anybody. But it's fun though. I love like I 
like it goes back to the conversation we were having earlier. I just like making content. And and I I never thought I'd be a streamer, but I've always loved playing video games. Isn't that word crack you up? I'm sorry. I, 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 don't cut, I don't mean to cut you, but in the eighties, a streamer meant like someone is just taking a piss. I, 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 I is that I'm, what it is? <laughs> I'm, chi- I'm childish as hell, dude. I, I get that. But whenever anybody, I run a streaming television network and every time I say it, I giggle. It's like yeah, it's streaming. <laughs> <laughs> streaming. Even, is, well, you going back to the question you had before, like I, like that whole time away from where I disappeared, I was wrestling in Mexico. I was wrestling in the, in the United States. I was doing Sandy Wexler. Um, I, and I was starting this streaming career. Like I started making a living doing what I love, which is playing video games, making films and wrestling. And so that's kind of what my life has turned into is, Hey, shut up. The dog farmer. He doesn't listen. He, yeah, oh, I have four dogs right now. Six are here in my house right now. I'm going insane. They're so cute. So but that's dog. a problem, too. There is so much dog. And I get in trouble because I just catch myself staring at him. I'm like, oh, you're cute. And then, like, two hours go by. And I'm like, I got to get shit done. You could have wrote that's a chapter. Probably, I could have wrote a whole chapter. I'd be bidding to write this book. I've got to figure this out. I might do that uh, microphone thing. I might do that. I this might. This is do what's going to happen to your book. I'm going to be reading it. It's like, and then I stood at the stood at the entrance way, walked down the ramp. One of my heroes, Ray Mysterio, his hair. And then in the crowd, I saw a service dog. Oh my god, he was so cute. <laughs> Damn it, Martin! I've got enough of the dog. <laughs> and then I got six one nine. Distraction by the dog. I got cheated, Ray. We wrestled many a times, and every time I got cheated. You bastard. Uh, do I play the piano? No, I don't play the piano trick. Uh, my wife does. She's amazing at it. Dude, I need backgrounds, dude. I have like a legit background. This is my office living room here. There's cool stuff back there, whatever. It, I just like the blue light, but I need a cool backgrounds, man. Like a green screen. This is, is that- a green screen. This is literally, I have like, I don't, I don't, even, I didn't even think this was up. I don't know how this even happened, to be honest. Um, just I picked literally- whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it just picked what this whatever. I didn't know that was even a thing. I literally have a green thing right here. Is this here. a Twitch thing or is it like a just on your computer type of background? Like, do you have like is, mon- monkeys eating blueberries and stuff? Like, I what is sometimes I feel like I'm the monkey just like poking buttons at this thing. This stream, I interview machine. you every day and just to see what background you pick. I think <laughs> it may change. I have no control of it apparently. Um, but yeah, I love this streaming thing because I've, I've literally like streamed me. Uh, driving to the Nightmare Factory. Oh, that's another thing I did uh, during that time frame. Um, I was in wrestling in Mexico, doing movies, starting this movie career, starting things that I enjoy doing and making that my life. Um, and then while doing a gym stream, because I streamed my gym work, I have a Bowflex downstairs. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, uh, while streaming, uh, anyone have a link to the interviewer? Let me, can you, do you have a chat? Is there a chat in here? Let's see. Do you have a freaking link that we can send these people have been asking me like crazy I sent you one earlier I tagged you in something but um I've been talking to you on text so I don't know where to send a link uh, I mean if you go to a Sci TV ASY TV it's on YouTube That's, there we go yeah it's pretty simple um and shit, like and subscribe I... too like and subscribe Ding. smash that thumbs up button right i hate that so my worst things on youtube and we got to get going here pretty, pretty soon but my least favorite things on youtube is when someone says what's up guys okay do you start Everyone off every do, i can't i, I think I, I might i'm not even sure what's How up guys? Start, guys what's up guys and it's everybody does it and i'm like come on just don't say that you could just go into it you know like or smash that like button because I just uh, I would like you to I don't want you to smash it because then it's broke and nobody it's else can hit it. <laughs> no one uh-huh. else. I need people to hit it. I need people to hit this. Yeah, thing. don't smash it. Just just lightly press it and let somebody else do it as well. So it's a light. Maybe touch. that's why I don't have a lot of viewers on YouTube. We got like five thousand people subscribers, but yeah. Oh, Martin said hi. Martin, yeah, said, out. Hey, how you doing there? All right, we you have a chat here. here. Yeah, we have a chat. This is fun. Now we now we got people talking. Hammerhead well, Fred a, says something. My community just threw in the uh, link to. Oh man, what crying. the fuck was that? <laughs> I love this thing, man. I could create anything. Like, like look, and I'm a Batman. <laughs> this sucks, yeah, dude. 
No, I love it because I can literally be anything so on that. streaming. Oh, that looks great. I love yeah, it. You like that? It was a it was a, a filter, I think that's what they're called. And now you're the, <laughs> now you're Heath Slater after he uh, never mind. Um <laughs> Heath Slater, did I say Heath Slater, Heath Ledger, my bad. You did, you did. You I did wonder if that's where he got his name. Hmm, I thought his name was Heath. Was it not? Because he kind of looked like him back in the day. His name's Heath, yeah, but it's Heath uh, uh Slater. Yeah, you know that happened. Um <laughs> I love the story. Here's the thing: I could bring down the wrestling business <laughs> just from the stories that all of these people I've been working with have been giving me personal stories. I'm like, why are you telling me this? I don't want to, you know. But just uh, like I know everything about the dark side, the underbelly of this business, all the good, all the complaints, all the the best, everything, and the worst of everything. And it's like I never asked one question about this shit. Pe wrestlers, you know, telephone, telegram, tele wrestler. It's like, holy crap with this. Well, I think you, you were saying it earlier is, is that people like, like you and me have, we've been friends for many years, but we don't talk to each other a bunch. I feel like that's in, in wrestling, a very, very common thing where like, I haven't seen you in a year, but we just pick off right from where we started and right where we started might've been four years ago, but which you pick up like, now we have an hour and 20 minutes worth of a conversation that we're still not even done with half the shit that I would like. I haven't even caught up at all. There's too many of us though. There's That's 50, true. There's 50 guys in the locker room. Let's say you get along with 20 of them. That's still 20 fucking people. You got to keep in touch with at all times. I love Christmas time, but I don't want to spend that whole day texting people going, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Mary, it's, it's it's just not you know we we we're secure in ourselves enough to know that i can call martin in 20 more years and be like hey buddy what's going on and you're gonna and we can have this conversation again about the what happened in the next 20 years so it might piece of shit if i copy and paste and just like boop, 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 i don't, even, boop, I don't boop, boop, boop. know dude you can do whatever just, <laughs> why would that make you a piece of shit <laughs> i'm responding back at least for those people who send me messages on my birthday and on oh, holidays okay. i'm at least responding back like I hey you, guys. i thought you're talking about this link i'm like i'm, I'm lost now anyways <laughs> um I want, uh, selfishly, I want that Martin Casals book. I want you on my damn TV every week for at least a couple more years until you're ready to say, screw this crap. I want you to succeed on the streaming stuff. I want you at my Comic-Con December 10th and 11th. Yaden and Rocky Mountain Pro are going to be there. I can't wait. Hell yeah. Um, I'm going to keep dropping your name to all these dipshits I talk to. I don't, not dipshits, but you know these everyone I talk to. And, uh, dude, I, I, I seriously hope whether we talk, uh, once a year or whatever it is that, uh, we can still do this, like I said, in 20 years. And, uh, and I think your fire alarm's going off. Oh, that's my, my vacuum. My vacuum is telling me right now that your vacuum talks to you and you have a grand I've... piano in the background. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Life isn't bad. Life isn't no, bad. It's, it's a good life, man. Well, thank you, dude, for this. I would try to get you for about a half hour. We've literally talked for two hours. That's awesome. No complaints over here. And uh, stay in touch, my friend. You yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate you not having me on here. Uh, I'll I'll tweet out the link, etc. And uh, we let's work on a TV show together. Because right. apparently, my chat over here is telling me they really want a book and they really want a TV show. And I've gotten several conversations over here about people suggesting what they would be. Well, tell them um, to go to a site TV. Look at the programming we have now. It's all travel, food, docu series, goofy shit. A lot of fun, really well done. I, I'd like to say so myself. Um, Got to be good at something. See what kind of shows we do, and then see where Martin falls into that. Because I think uh, Martin going around eating pizza, or Martin going around uh, looking at um, things that you, Martin's in. in I, I like shows that are just the person having fun doing stuff you know it, it may be the same damn show everything that i do but the personalities and the locations make it completely different i think you fit into there into that I'm, thing where we can just put you anywhere and we can have fun i'm wondering i have my uh, a film project i'm working on with some members of my community um maybe i have you come out here and we do something like between wrestling and making the film um i'm I didn't get to tell you I'm playing. I'm, I'm cast as Jesus in this next film coming out. I am not joking. <laughs> I am. Somebody literally looked at me and they said, Jesus. 
and and they're going to pay me money to do so. Are and you sure, sure they're sure casting or they're just like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but they're going to pay me money, so I'll take it. Uh, I, I've, I'm living a great life. And uh, I, I feel like the more and more older I get, I want to do more of the things that I love with the people that I enjoy with me. So I feel like we, I, I, I'm doing a lot with Rocky Mountain Pro. I literally, when wrestling is over, I'm going to keep doing Rocky Mountain Pro and helping them as much as possible. I would love to be working with you as much stuff as possible as well. Where do you so find Rocky happen. Mountain? Where do you find Rocky Mountain Pro? Is it on Twitch as well? It do, it's on Twitch. It actually has a huge channel on Twitch, Rocky Mountain Pro. Uh, they also have a YouTube channel as well where they post their episodes. They have uh, shows on Tuesdays and every Saturday, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so they have two uh, matches a week. And I wish that was a thing that was around, like I was saying earlier, when I was a, a young boy starting out. I bumped into him and uh, Curtis Cole. Yep. In Vegas a little while. I actually, um, I like Matt a lot more than he likes me. Um, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Back in the day, we were two promoters. Uh -huh. We did not work on each other's shows. And you know, wrestlers, they do a lot of this. And okay. I, I'm, yep. I'm sure, you know, I deserve some of the critique. Of course I did. I'm sure, uh, maybe, whatever. But when I got to go, oh my God, it's a stampede. Yes, when, right. I, when me and Bennett got to go there and we got to do a seminar, uh, I will say this about Rocky Mountain Pro. They, uh, that is, they got their shit together. And I love to see that. I hate independent promotions that just stick up a ring with dirty freaking side aprons and a blanket over a door for an intro and all this stuff and a bunch of wrestlers and you know wife beaters and you know hot topic gear that shit drives me freaking crazy i never have you ever seen acw do that never never freaking never and i think rocky mountain pro is just one of those promotions where it's like okay i respect what you're doing and i got the chance to uh revisit a little bit of my wrestling chops and share whatever knowledge I had mainly through Bennett because he's a freaking mastermind. And it was one of the most fun times I've ever had. And I had a really, really, it was really good for the heart because I never worked for Rocky mountain pro. I was never invited, found another way in. And not that I was thinking about that at all, but it just kind of happened because we were filming this documentary across the country with Mike Bennett called, I love this shit. It's on YouTube right now. Go watch it. It's fantastic. And uh, it's, during a pandemic and an ice storm. So we're in a, we're in a car driving from, you know, Chicago to Dallas to Denver and back. And uh, it was a great time. Anyway, uh, I just uh, have nothing but respect for uh, Matt and uh, Rocky mountain pro. They're the first promotion I asked to be at the comic con. And um, yeah, I hope you're there too. Yeah, I, I will be. You sent me the, the form I, I have sucked at, at signing and uh you just hate writing language. things. You hate writing, period. I really do. I really hate like book reports, all that. I hated doing book reports. Do, do you need to like get out of the bag? Like not you, you, you can't read or <laughs> I can't <laughs> read. No, seriously, we'll we'll back you and we'll support you through the whole thing. We'll get you some help. Is, is that really what it is? I mean, you're <laughs> I got a 3.98 in college. I, I feel like I somehow bullshitted my way into making people think I could read pretty good. You're a good looking guy. That's what it is. I read. Yeah, I got a purr of mouth. Just smile and pass. But anyways, <laughs> I will see you soon, man. Let's keep in touch. Let's talk TV. Let's talk movies. Let's talk all kinds of stuff. And uh, thank you again so much, man. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Thanks for having me. Take care. All right. That was Martin, man. I, I miss that guy. I really did. Uh, good dude. And like I said, before I talked to him and while I talked to him, uh, it's genuine stuff. Genuine people. Um, if you don't know Martin on a personal level, then uh, it's uh, it, it's a it's a it's a pleasure to know the guy. And it's uh, his the word genuine just keeps popping up. I'm getting some stuff here now. What do we got here? You're too funny, Brandon. Bre definitely subscribe. Thank you for that. Or he just contracted himself a title match on the longest pay per view. I I don't know what that means. Explain yourself. Don't explain yourself because we're going over two hours. On, oh, man. This is way too long. I try to keep these things around an hour. I actually had stuff to do tonight. 
But like I said, man, you get what you watch today was just me and an old friend having a conversation. There's other things I wanted to talk about. I do have listener mail from the actual podcast, which you can find the Brandon Bishop podcast on everywhere you'll find a podcast. And uh, you can watch the Aside TV Life, which is this face, this big dumb face all over the country, all the behind the scenes stuff for a side TV and a side TV. What is that? It's a streaming television network. It's the mom and pop shop of streaming television. You've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got Amazon prime, HBO max, uh, paramount plus, 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 plus. You've got all that stuff. Now try a side TV, a S Y TV. I should have, hang on, wait a minute. I got, I've got ways to do this banner banner. Boom, right there. That's where it's at right here. You see this right here. It's right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, uh, it's five bucks a month. It's pretty damn cheap for uh, how expensive things are getting. I'm not raising my prices. We have a big relaunch coming up really soon. I'm excited about that. Lots of TV shows, a lot of familiar faces, especially if you're a wrestling fan or a rock and roll fan, a lot of homegrown talent. We got shows in every corner of the country. It's five bucks a month. I think you can afford it. I'd give it to you for free, but, uh, it's just not how the world works. You know, I got to make a living. I got to buy more suits of armor and, uh, mixed tiles and stick them on the wall. But thank you so much for uh, listening to the Brandon Bishop podcast. I'm Brandon Bishop, man. We will talk to you next Tuesday. We're back on track. Yes, we got our schedule back. I'm not on the road anymore doing the van life thing. And if you want to know what the van life thing is or you're addicted to the van life thing, watch the Asai TV, A-S-Y TV life on the A-S-Y TV channel. What do we got here? A whole bunch of a hi. What does that say? trans gardener hi how are you it's a very long hi we will be back next tuesday we'll probably keep doing these things live normally they're recorded but uh unless you guys got something you want to talk about uh, what time is it it's like eight <laughs> eight thirty something i don't know uh i am exhausted i have not eaten today i just realized that i've been busy from the time i woke up i'm still busy and then i got crap to do after this so I really need to put some food in my face before it gets too late. And uh, that's what I'm going to go do right now. So talk to you guys soon. Check out Asai TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and AsaiTV.com. Uh, and uh, watch the Asai TV Life on YouTube. See you next week. Bye. If I can find the in broadcast button. Bye. Yeah, did I hit the button?